This episode is sponsored by Battlefoam.com, now with new lower shipping prices. Join us for a Kingdom Death Monster all weekend on twitch.tv forward slash beasts of war. Good morning and welcome to the Weekender! We return. Hello! We're back! After an amazing salute, I was amazing, I covered so much stuff, I got so many prizes, I just was, I didn't do any of it, but these guys <laughs> did a fantastic job. Yeah, I think we were over 6,000 comments at last check. That, yes. That's insane. Um, we, the, the salute competition is staying open for a month. Believe me, we have, we have loads that you can win in that, so go across to that live blog. During the course of this month, periodically, we're going to just re-ping Salute back to the top. We'll be doing this kind of thing, actually, with Salute, uh, UK Games Expo, yep. Gen Con, Adepticon, or big shows uh, yep. throughout the yeah. year where, where we have large pride pools. We're just going to keep popping them back up again yep. because there's so much you can learn from these events. Yeah. And there's so many prizes that you can win as well. So no, this, this is the important thing. The prizes are for the individual posts, so if you want your chance to win a specific thing, get into that post, get your comments into that post, and keep an eye on the weekend here, because that's where we always announce these stuff, because I've seen a lot of people ask yeah. recently, yeah. when do we announce a prize? Right here. I had someone con contacting, did you announce, announce this prize yet? Oh, when was it? Two years ago. Yes. <laughs> it's all, We always announce our prizes in the weekender. Unless we don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which well, was the case for the confrontation pledge. Yes, who um, has actually claimed and the details have been sent through. Perfect, perfect. Right, um, some uh, bits and pieces just to update everyone. Mm. I have an update for you first, Warren. Okay. Something that might make you a little bit sad. Oh. So, uh, you'll have seen the epic, the amazing Star Wars table at Salute. This should be coming here, yes? Uh, yes, my, yes, my amazing... Black landing pad. Yeah. That I, that, there's a story to that, you know. Yeah, but wait. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> okay. let, let me tell you the story to Settle that. Settle in. Oh, it's going to be so sad. So <laughs> after after the after the the fabled realms beta weekend. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. There was um there was a there, we were talking with the guys at foreground and people were pitching ideas and stuff like that there and they're getting overwhelmed with ideas. Okay. So they held a dragon's den. Ah uh, yes. Style I this. Um, ah. idea pitch. Ah. Right. And I thought to myself. This is it. This is my opportunity. My time to share. I could be a contender. And this could be my opportunity to get the perfect Star Wars table. The perfect yes. sci-fi table. Yeah. I remember this because I walked out of the Wii Editing Suite that we have run in that to find you holding up diagrams <laughs> and books. <laughs> 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 That's how you did it. Everybody else thought they could compete, and yeah. then I stepped in. And I had my diagrams, I had my reference books, I had yeah. everything, and I pitched to them. Wouldn't it be amazing to have a sci-fi hangar bay with the glossy black tiles yes. and stuff? And it just, it, it was, it was amazing. And then I discovered that they have built it. They took my idea and they have built it and they've made this amazing modular system. Yeah, stuff. it looks great. And they've it's built dope. a table for me and it's on its way here. After, I couldn't be happier. After Gen Con. What? After Gen Con. <laughs> Excuse so me. It, it, it's gone to salute. <laughs> it now has to go to Gen Con. Then mm. it's coming here. Justin, lean back. He might punch you. Lean back. <laughs> Stay away. Uh, you're telling me it's not on its way here? Not until after Gen Con. I know. No, no, I, I, I will say. I Sorry, will say we'll it. be back. Technical difficulties. They, they, they did offer to send it as a kit, so we would have to build it. But I, oh. I, I think, I, yeah, I think. <laughs> You would rather wait until after Gen Con. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> it'll be here after Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> I can't um, wait. The the cool thing is, within the, the Salute Live blog, they are actually giving away that table as a kit to one lucky winner. So, <gasps> yeah. Really? Yeah, the, the int all the kits you need to make that table is going to one lucky winner. So mm. That was the first prize we had up Which on. post is that? <laughs> <laughs> you know we're not allowed to enter it. <laughs> but, um... No, I, I haven't seen it in the flesh. I've been drooling all over the pictures of it. Yeah. Um, uh, which I'm hoping the editors have been putting this in. That you know, explains watch. the residue on my keyboard. Yeah, now the editors have been... Yeah, the editors are scrubbing back through and putting them all in again. <laughs> Thank you, editors. Um, but I've been drooling over it. Well, yeah. What is it like in the flesh? It's, Did it's, you all get to see it, did you? Yeah. yeah. 
it's perfect quite simply it is perfect it has everything you want you've got lots of little rooms in the back where you've got the control consoles and stuff that they've designed for it you've got the big landing bay our lambda glass shuttle looked great on it mm -hmm. and then in the landing bay itself you have like little lowered bits that people can jump into like little trenches in the thing when i see it will i have mini lightsaber or mega lightsaber uh, you, False Pike, you, probably. <laughs> <laughs> You'll probably be going Dark Mall. You know, that is not enough. <laughs> I just cannot wait to see it in the yeah. flesh. Yeah, it's... although right, right next to it was my favourite table at Salute. Uh huh. Uh, someone had actually redone the Salute layout, so the, the actual Salute Hall, as a gaming table. I saw this. As a zombie escape game, and they put us into it. Mm. Picking the worst picture of me ever. Oh, they, <laughs> the, the, they, well, they had plenty to choose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not exactly the most photogenic face for radio and all that. They, 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 it was a fun uh, addition with having us in because apparently we would slow you down as we ask you for interviews while you're fleeing the zombies. Yeah, so you were running around salute trying to get your pre-orders, and then if we caught you, it was just like, "Hey, have you time for an interview?" No, it's chewing on my leg. <sighs> and see, that's about right. It's either that or the ice cream van. They're really the only, yeah, yeah, yeah. the only two beasts of war things that could make it into a game like that. So, what was your highlight of uh, of Salute then? Oh, it's, um, ben, do you have choice. one that, that comes to mind, mate? Um, I think actually for me it was um, bumping into some of the smaller companies that we took, we don't normally get to talk to. So I had a really, really fascinating uh, discussion with um, the guy behind uh, Empress Miniatures. And it was really fun just hearing his enthusiasm and everything behind what he was doing. And obviously getting to pick up some burrs and badges and stuff, which I talk about all the time anyway. But yeah, yeah it was great to go and see what Michael and Joe have been doing and just the... Just the amount of fun that people were having around their stand and everything like that. So yeah, genuine enthusiasm from a couple of different companies and just that sort of overjoyed look on their faces when everyone was coming over and buying all their stuff. So yeah. See this man. See this man. He ended up getting almost all of us to buy some borrowers and bags. <laughs> I resisted. I didn't resist. I'm actually a corporate else, shill. No, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't resist. I, like Ben, I grew up reading the Discworld. Uh, Discworld? Of course I read the Discworld Red ones. The Red Wall books. Although Discworld is amazing. Uh, but I was reading the Rebel books. I went down. I just happened to be going past and I spotted one that were, looked very similar to a piece of Red Wall art from one of my favorite books as a kid. I just went, well, resistance is futile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, highlight of Salute for me. It's the same as it is every year. I know it's cliche to shit, say, but it's getting to meet up with all of the community members, getting to meet up with all of our friends from the industry who are working so hard to actually make great yeah. games and great products for everybody. And just having a, having a chat very quickly. I know Salute is absolutely hectic, so it's, it's very quick. Hi, bye, and you're off to the next interview, but it's really nice to see everybody. Yeah. What of the shinies? What of the shinies oh, really the, got the, you? Come on. Shinies. Oof. Come on, Justin, that's what it, it's all about, it is the shinies. the guys at Custom War Gamer. Right. They had some, some beautiful stuff. So they've got Anno Domini, Ugh. Anno Domini 1666, which is a really nice pirate board game coming out it's soon. It's not pirates. Isn't it? No. Oh, what is it? It was like musketeers. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be uh, like. So my highlight was well, not my highlight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the These also... are mighty fine pirates you have. Sorry, who are you talking to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they also had some some beautiful uh, ones that they ran on Kickstarter for their their uh, pinup miniatures. Hot and had... dangerous. Yes, strange. yes, mm. very very beautiful, like fifty four mil, twenty eight mil stuff. Mm. So. I uh, got one of the, the 54 mils, and I got two of the 28 mils, one for John, one for his missus. Because mm, yeah. uh, John's birthday is coming up too. Okay, okay. Yeah, I just want to also point out and um, say thank you to Richard Peachy, who's Peachy Models on the on the site, um, for coming along and helping us do all the stuff with the painting competition. Because yeah. it's really always great to have him along, to, to doing all the pictures for that, talking to all the people involved, and then getting the interview with the winner at the end as well. That was really awesome. So, yes, thank you. Thank you, Peachy. That was very helpful indeed. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right, and some other updates now that my heart is well and truly broken, that my heart is... <laughs> my... My table's not coming. I thought it was coming. It'll be here. there. It'll be there if you believe hard enough. Right. Oh, I know. Super it almost makes me want to go to Gen Con <laughs> just to see it. Um, right. We get on the plane. Um, some other stuff uh, kicking off on Monday. We have the first of our World War One content. Yes. Mm. Um, uh, twenty eighteenth is uh, twenty eighteen is a centenary year. Mm -hmm. Um, well, one of the centenary years of uh, World War One. Uh, so on Monday, um, uh, uh, a co-production mm -hmm. between Oriskany and Nevis seventeen eighty nine. So it's a fifty fifty co-production between those two guys. Um, are going to be looking at um some of the various engagements that uh, took place during the period of, of 1918.
So it's a four or five part series. We're mm -hmm. going to try and get Jim on the show next week to, to give us a bit of a rundown on it because it is it is a really fascinating um, uh, period, mm -hmm. uh, the whole World War I. Um, and it, it led to a lot of changes yeah. in how warfare took place as well. It's, it's... That, that's why I'm actually more interested in World War One over World War Two a lot of the times, just because of the whole of the shift you see during that time. It's 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 difficult to. I don't know. Right, I'm going to put on my historical expert hat here. <sighs> so do we have? I think have I think if you had to actually call it. Yeah, I think that the technical and strategic innovation was actually higher in World War Two. Oh, probably. I think during yeah. the course of World War Two, warfare changed in a maybe in a more dynamic way than it did in World War One. They're both very close. Well, like World War One, almost started out uh, almost a little bit like Napoleonics at mm. the start, and there was still Calvary horse cavalry guards, yeah. and stuff like that there. Still by left the, over from the Boer War. By the end of it, though, um, the whole trench warfare had introduced basically the tank and stuff like that. So, But remember, at the start of World War II, um, uh, the, you, they were still fielding some of the tanks mm. that they had had from World War I. Um, the... But by the end of World War II, we had um, we had full on air combat. We had nuclear um, weapons, well, atomic weapons. There, there was. Yeah. I think if you had, we had rockets. You know, well, I, I, World War One was where you saw the beginning of a lot of the innovation. World War Two was more of the refinement of those innovations. Because that that's one thing that war know. does. It pushes know. forward technology, and it's a, a refinement process. I, I don't know if you would classify World War Two though as a refinement process. There were some well, pretty big leaps. Mm, true, but. A tank at the start of the war and a tank at the end of the war. It's still a tank. It's just yeah, a but, more refined piece. Uh, uh, Some of the science behind it and certain things would have obviously been innovations from World War II. Well, uh, but but the thing is, the tank at the start of the war yes. was basically like a big tin of beans. Yeah, well, right? uh, uh, Whereas um, the technical, the, the technical, like tanks by the end of the war had infrared. You know, they had uh, stabilization. Some, yeah. yeah, well, mid war they would have had. You that, know, uh, 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 did they have active armor plate or anything? Uh, that no, stage, they wouldn't or... have uh, had active or reactive armor plating by the end of it, as far as I know. But we were seeing things like the the Patton, which was uh, a tank that we, we would know from like the, the Vietnam War, I think yeah. it was in. I don't know. Do you know what? That's that, Korea? that's an amazing it? discussion. That it, that is ready uh, that is ready to be had, you know, during the course of um uh, of this because I am really interested because like World War One did unlock innovation. World War One set the scene where technology um was going to completely overtake yeah. warfare. Okay, yeah, well, we were where you were going to lean on technology hmm. more than you were going to lean on manpower because until that point, all warfare was basically leaning on manpower, maybe horses a bit. Yeah, yeah. But, but at that stage, we were becoming an industrialized society, which is where that shift came from, the ability to create those weapons of war. Yes, but I mean, it, 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 that's your main flux, is moving mm -hmm. from manpower to technology. Yeah. World War Two almost took us, um, you know, it, it took that a, a lot further as well. Um, on the reliance of technology until today where we are now on the cusp of warfare being an almost technology only mm. well, uh, we, type we thing with stuff, autonomous yeah. weapons and the only, only thing is when when you start saying the shift away from uh, from manpower to technology all that's going through my head is general Meltship from blackadder you know precisely doing the exact same thing we did 16 times before is precisely the last thing they'll expect us to do this time <laughs> <laughs> but anyway it's a series that i'm really really looking forward to because i want to learn a ton about it mm. i've always been fascinated by trench warfare because you know uh, trench warfare has this uh, this ability to grind everything to a halt mm. and it really it starts to become attrition. attrition at that point it's it's well, really fascinating stuff so if you would like uh, a good sort of drama slash documentary piece to watch with it the mm -hmm. bbc did a fantastic series a little while ago i believe it was called our war mm -hmm. uh, the great war or our war one of the yeah. two yeah so basically yeah. each episode was following like a different aspect of the war so one was where they were on the canals the next was like following a tank troop whenever tanks were just beginning to be introduced very mm -hmm. interesting stuff 
Fascinating. Right, we'll try and get a, a link uh, into that. Um, in other in other news, um, the merchandise has been revealed for UK yes, Games Expo. Has. Um, wait, so the oh. UK Games Expo is fast approaching. Yeah. It's on the first, second, third, third. and fourth. Is it? No, I think I it's just the first, second, and third. First, second, third. We're coming home on the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, of June. Um, we will, of course, be there. We're going to be live blogging all weekend. We are mm. also going to be running constant live streams all weekend. So we've got live stream blocks with loads of companies mm -hmm. where each one is going to be joining us for 30 minutes or so to show off a new game and stuff like that. So we're just going to be... Uh, absolutely showering in content mm -hmm. and we will have uh, we'll have the usual prizes and everything else if you're going to be at uk games expo and um, we're going to do a beast of war meetup yep which night um you know what our meetup <laughs> nights can meet up nights can go like yeah you know will we so? will we aim for the saturday night i would yeah i would say let's go with the saturday night just because on the sunday we can at least have the excuse of oh it's a wind down day we're taking it a little yeah. easier well, well, well sunday <laughs> might be just a little bit slower so we'll aim for a meetup on the yeah. saturday night shall we use yeah. the, the same bar we used last year at the genting it, the genting genting yeah. genting yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah what was it It was the world bar or something yeah it was, was the it? world bar just uh as you come out of the nec it's just right up the hill on your left yes so we'll be we'll probably meet up in the world bar in the gentings yeah. um on the saturday night yeah so looking forward to that yeah. anybody Bring that your can, games. yeah anybody can make it just just come along and we'll have a we'll have a few beers we'll celebrate we'll hug and we'll make merry yes <laughs> you were wondering where we were going with that but that's okay yeah, I, um, I don't trust this man right. sometimes <laughs> merch yes. um there Buy merch! <laughs> Buy merch! Actually, we will talk about merch in a second, but first things first, yeah, yes. um, UK Games Expo, let's give them their bite first. Yeah. yeah. Don't be too quick to go and buy this, because. <laughs> but it, here's the merch for UK Games Expo. So they've ooh, got the. I like the dice ooh, bags. I love the logo they're running with this time. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Okay, so we have dice bags um, uh, by Cozy Dice, who happens to do our merch as well. Yeah. And we have uh, dice trays from All Rolled Up. Nice. Isn't that nice? Yep, mm. we and have, then we have the, the T-shirt. Mm -hmm. nice. And is that like everything? That. Yes, that's everything. So um, The T-shirt tempts me. It's very cool. Ben, thing. where do they go to buy this merch? Um, so you can go and buy it from over on the UK Games Expo uh, website. So if you go over on to there, there's a store where you can go and get your hands on all this stuff, as well as being able to pick it up at the event as well, because there'll be a big stall set up. Like, but if you don't want to be disappointed when it comes to UK Games Games. Uh, games expo and getting your stuff then just make sure to get your orders in ahead of time and then you'll be able to just collect them during the weekend when you're there so absolutely yeah. Yeah. and if you don't want to be extra disappointed go and pick up your beast of war merch because we have the the beast of war dice bags we have the beast of war satchels, satchels you were going to um, say man, bag, weren't man you? bags <laughs> yeah it's the hottest merch in the game <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so go go and buy your merch it's beautiful beautiful stuff yeah. and, and we give you a choice of red or green now, which kind of piece of war are you? I'm a green. I'm a red. I'm a red. Mm. I'm a green. I'm a classic. I'm a <laughs> classic. Ben, it's you and me against the world. <laughs> okay. Um, so, last uh, last one to remind you, remember that um, the, we have that massive salute competition going on. It'll be running over the course of the next month. There's 30-plus prizes uh, for you to win. To be in with a chance of winning any of them, you have to go into the individual posts that you want to try and win, mm. watch the video, leave a comment yeah. on beastofwar.com. Set up a free account to do mm. that. Yeah. Also, if it's maybe not something that you want to win, but you think one of your friends might, make sure and give it like a share on Facebook. Yes. Actually spread the word mm. about it. Eh? Yeah, let them let them get in with a chance of uh, winning that. There there are some amazing prizes mm -hmm. scattered through that. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, tell you about some hubs, and then we'll be right back with some of the news. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Vault Action Hub at beastsofwar.com. Anime cyberpunk style meets skirmish combat in Infinity. Experience eight high-tech factions and fight to control the human sphere at the Infinity Hub on beastsofwar.com. And in true Warren fashion, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're not <laughs> getting ahead yet. I did. We have other stuff to show you. Yes, we yes. do indeed. What is this? This is a new board game that's heading its way to Kickstarter. Okay. It is called... Mega Metro City. No, 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 hang on. We, we have to do it in true 80s fashion. Mega Metro City! Oh, yeah. 
love it. It's another 80s revival, yeah. is it? Yeah, it is. Well, have, having done that interview with Angry Joe, I'm all, all, all into my old retro 80s video games again. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? I'm really though. jealous you getting to do that. Oh, Isn't it amazing, really? though, that you the, the, the world is crying out for uh, an 80s style beat em up game, and then yeah. suddenly a raft of them all appear well, all that, at the same time? That's so. funny that. Uh, uh, nostalgia works in about 30 year cycles. Mm. Yeah. So right now we're he still heavily in the 80s nostalgia cycle. Is it 30 years since Street Fighter and uh, all, well, all no, of those? I, I remember playing it on the Super Nintendo when I was a kid. Yeah. So it can't be 30 years yet. I'm it, not must that be, old. it must be close, so yeah. it must be yeah, yeah, getting yeah, it's, in around it's that. Getting there. Well, here we have uh, Mega Metro City by yeah. Boombox Board Games. It's coming to Kickstarter on uh, the 24th at 9 p.m. GMT. Yeah, so that's Tuesday. Which is. Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. At 9 p.m. GMT, which is is that 8 p.m. British summer time? Basically, Something, check it out. Yeah. 9 p.m. GMT. Um, they have an early bird. Eighty-four dollars mm. for the first twenty-four hours. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. So they've got a, uh, they've got a bit of a discount. Now we haven't played this. No, they've um, been very kind and sent us over this preview copy though. Right. So this is a prototype. Yeah. This yeah. is right. This is okay. a prototype. Right. We, so due to salute and everything we have not had the time to really dig into it okay so obviously. this is going to be this going to be an opportunity to have a have a look at it so yeah. uh, the uh, currently it's smart does remember all of this is subject to change yeah. but it's I love uh, the art 45 mm. 45 to 90 minutes is it yes, yeah I love that. um the one, one to four, to four player. players oh so you can play solo mm. um uh, 14 plus yeah. well, let's as you can see off. from the art just quickly yeah you, this is very much your sort of streets of rage style of yes things. so the side scrolling beat em ups I, i'm oh. getting vibes of double dragon from this mm. yeah shinobi <laughs> Oh, I love Double Dragon. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's. I love Double Dragon too so. until Justin showed me the movie. There we go. Right. So we have um, the beta rulebook and the obligatory disclaimer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um. So this prototype has been made by hand with the help of some small businesses. Both the quality of the uh, and the materials um will be of a professional level once the game is produced. Mm. This prototype comes with four standees that will be four miniatures in the final game. And the three D models are just getting finished off for that. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, let's have a let's have a look through it. So it, it a is lot. a prototype. Oh, there is a lot in that. Isn't yeah. yeah. Let me get you zoomed in there, guys. So as you know, when as you remember when you play these games, you and your friends would each choose your hero. And there yeah. wouldn't be that many heroes. And then you would face off against a tide of criminals and punks and well let me show you in, in the game savages. okay so you have um you have a final boss you have four bosses you have four heroes and then here you have 15 punks 10 roller girls 10 chains and 10 muscle men mm. so if we start like passing them out, yeah so let's start looking at the heroes so here they are and then one more there so um here, I'll tell you lost. what, the sculpt quality is, good, sculpt yeah. quality is very good. Um, we'll, we'll try and see if you we can, can get you something a bit clo more close up on this, but you can even see the raggedy edge mm -hmm. um, around the around the shirt on this. It's really, really nice. Um, let's just see if you can yeah. see these. So quality-wise, it's actually yeah. pretty darn good. I, I really love made this. Of. Yeah. Um, so here's another one. The yeah, those are the different heroes you can do. So as as usual, you'd have the, uh, the it, each hero has their own style. Yeah. From the look of it. If you spin them around, Justin, I'll try and see if I can yeah. find out some information some about these. the heroes. Yeah. <coughs> as you can see here, what Justin's laying out, there are the uh, well, that's a hero there. Yeah. The, the, we'll all the red the ones are. Yeah. So do we know who he has, Warren? Yeah. <laughs> Let him dig through the book first. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at the villains right now. As you can see, we have the muscle men. Justin, if you can show off one of the muscle men there. So they're going to be the ones that will take a bit more of a beat down to take out. Mm -hmm. Then you have the, what was it, the roller girls? The roller there? girls, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I remember villains like these in the old Streets of Rage style games. <laughs> they were so annoying. Yes. Yeah. 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 Did you used to play these sort of games, Ben? 
I did as well, yeah. So I, I can vividly getting all these moments of going through that with a couple of friends trying to get through to the end of the levels and things. But from what I've been seeing of this game and some of the previews and stuff and what you've showed me and things, this does look very cool. I love the idea of the whole sort of like moving, going through the, the streets, fighting each of the bands of punks and stuff as you go. It's going to have a very cool um, cooperative feel to it, I reckon. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, what well, Justin's the looking at there. Are very cool as well. Yeah, we have punks and chain guys. I think they were called that. Mm. Yeah, we also have. Um, oh, you found the um, heroes. We've uh, we've found some bosses. So oh, these boss. are some of the cards. Yeah. So Do. there's Everisto. Um, I think uh, that might boss. be this guy. I don't know. Let's just check out. He's huge. He is huge. So there's Everisto. We have Lars with a big stone. Um, oh. He might be one of the standees that we have here, actually. Yeah, uh, Lars. Um, we have Bogart. That's um, him. Actually, that's, that's Bogart. him. Yeah, that's yeah. Bogart. And we have uh, Jet. Oh, very yeah. cool. Oh, that would be cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And we have Sid. Oh, nice. I love it. So um, these cards have kind of the different uh, levels. So there's hard. You can play it in different modes. You see, so you can play. Hard, mm-hmm. um, or very hard. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's got that really kind of. Um, and there's Wallace, mm-hmm. hard, uh, th- normal, very hard. So it's got a nice so, video game feature. Yeah, it yeah. does have that that I video mean, game. Do you remember those vibe? bit when you were playing as a kid and you'd be playing them all together and you get to the end of the level and suddenly the music would change and the big boss would step out. Yes. I know the yeah. the one thing that always terrified me when I was playing these as a kid. Ah. Was you would see a uh, a minion that you fought before, yeah. but he's wearing a different coloured top. <laughs> dun, oh. dun, dun! I you think just knew we... he was tougher because of he was wearing a different coloured top. I, I think I've found, more yeah, I found here? the hero ah. cards. Oh, there we go. That's what I've been looking for. Oh, I love this. Look at this. Look at this counter. What is it? It's a cassette. Yippee-ki-yay! <laughs> yes. Okay, so now we're starting to get into some of the really cool stuff. So here we have the. the this is the turn counter here, which is a yeah. uh, an no, audio cassette. Oh, I love it! I love it so much. Isn't that isn't that Wait, awesome? Um, here we have some of the the hero cards, so we can start to to find yeah. out their names. So while first you're one doing that, I'll just break open some of the location cards. So, we have so here we have Jack, and there's the the mini for Jack. Uh, nope, this is the mini for Jack. Is that the mini for Jack? That's oh yeah, so Jack. it is. Yeah, there's well, Jack. I'll put the mini for each of them there. Okay, we then have um, Travis. Yep, so this would be Travis. Uh-huh. And we have uh, Blaze. I love the names. <laughs> it's so awesome. 80s. 80s and 90s, right here. And then uh, we have Big T. <laughs> I went to school with somebody called Big T. <laughs> <laughs> I've always had someone in school with that kind of a nickname. Uh, here we've got some of the location cards for the stages. Let me show you something amazing. Oh, right. Yeah. I've, they even have. Look at that there. It looks like a bit like a an eighteen van oh, kind of a, a thing going on in the game somewhere. I'm just. A, I'm really enjoying picking through yeah, all this. Just find. Oh, right. Sorry. Stages yeah. in. So this is what's going to give it its beat 'em up yeah. kind of a feel. Yeah. So you'd have okay. the dirty, grimy sit- streets of mega metro. I tell you what, it's a big, heavy box of stuff. It is. You know, it it's really a, is. You're getting if, a lot of stuff. You know, it's oh wow, just one to make Justin excited there. Akira, the Akira bike. Hey, hey, let's go. Let's go look at that. So yeah, uh, that that is Canada's bike from Akira. Definitely. I'm just thinking sure. every time. Oh, oh, look, there's stuff on the other side of this. Yeah, they're double sided. Everything, everything you you look at on this, it just opens up more and more. That's the arcade. Oh, yeah. just, mm. How cool is it's that? It's got that nice side schooler feel to the artwork as well. That's uh. But that's one of them special bars, Justin. Oh yeah, 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 so. yeah. <laughs> well, apparently that place looked to be called the Dirty Sanchez. And I that's and way. that's a that's a <laughs> that's a saloon. That's a saloon. Yeah. I think that maybe that's the uh, angry leprechaun we can see here in the corner of this one. Uh, An angry leprechaun. That that's the name of the bar here in the corner of the. Oh yeah, so it is. Let's get in there till we see that. So, um, here we have one of the streets. So this is one uh, yeah. A. Yeah. And then I think the streets basically just build up as you yeah, yeah as you go along. along, and you see there's oh, all these uh, God, look at bits all, all the outline. bits of, yeah that you can now. Oh, this is just so cool! I will admit my f- first one of these uh, fighting games was actually the Batman game. Yeah, so I'm having massive flashbacks to playing that on. I think it was the the Atari Lynx. 
mm. you know, a, a handheld gaming console was that, you could that bring the one? People with. I was utterly addicted to a Batman game on the Amiga, mm. and it was the one where you got to drive the Batmobile, and you or you as you you had to get round corners, and the only way to get round corners was to fire out a chain that went round a lamp post and then swung you. Nice. Around the corner. I don't so think that was, was it. I don't oh, think this was, was a side scroll and beat. Well, this, this, everything was side scroller at that yeah, point, the, except for this particular racing segment. Yeah. Right, so the first one of these I ever played was actually Golden Axe, if you remember. Oh, yeah. Golden Axe yeah, was, was a great classic. game. So I've got to, I've got to ask you guys, right? Yeah. So, um, and this one goes out to you guys as well. I'm seeing this game, and I just want to have an '80s night. Okay. Okay. Um, where where we you you eat drink dress, eighties style. I'm up for that. I okay. miss the eighties. Um, I, I I was born in the nineties. What what would you what would you throw into the mix, you know? Because this is oh. the all these games are about us getting together and having some fun. Um, Ben, what would you throw into the mix for an eighties night? Well, you need to go basically go through all the retro wave soundtracks that are now being added to YouTube and Spotify and use those clearly. Yeah. But then also throw in Laser Riders by Greater Than Games as well, because you need to have a little bit of cool laser stuff going yeah. on. So that's another game you could get stuck into the mix with. So yeah. Absolutely. What about food-wise? <laughs> they've drinks? got the DeLorean on this one, sorry. It's a DeLorean. There it it's is! It's the DeLorean! Oh. It's, it's just like, it's it's like a scene out of Ready Player One. Oh, they have a Gundam it's head, right. yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. when it comes to food, I'm, I mean, I'm slightly limited, obviously, but I like the idea of like loads of cool takeaway stuff in like the kind of quirky old cups that they used to do and stuff. That would be really cool. Yeah. So yeah, and brightly coloured straws because you need brightly coloured straws. Old oh, cool. So yeah. I, I think I think going back, it would have to be you'd have to get Chinese, okay? Mm. But uh, <laughs> I, what I would do is I would buy Chinese food, okay? Yeah. But I would uh, they they hardly do them anymore. But do you remember the. Uh, it's the more retro style um, Chinese containers that yeah. the, the, little, the little boxes. Yeah. The little yeah. boxes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we'll have that. Those actually folded out to become a plate. Did they really? Yeah. We still does them. Well, well in, we, in we would get that. We'd get that Chinese yeah. food in those little boxes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it would have to be Coca Colas. Yeah, of yeah. course. Ice cold <laughs> Coca Colas. Yeah. Um, Optimus I found Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime, Optimus Prime on there. Yeah. This I, is I, just I, such a, a treasure trove. Like, see, there, there's one I remember from when I was a kid, but I, I think it may have been 90s. Yeah. You need to get a big dose of tango in. You remember the old adverts? You know when you've been tango. That was 90s. Ah, uh, that no. was 90s. That was you like have 90s. It? Yeah, that was, no, 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 no. There's already so much in the 80s, man, to explore. But um, you know, I'm thinking Coca Colas and oh, I'd so just be mad. We would get those, watch some of the old Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons or something, and play this. And the... I, do you know what? <laughs> well, actually, I would, it would have been Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. I would have, I would no, have had that Teenage Mutant the, Ninja Turtles. In no, no, the no. The, the actual theme song was Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Uh, no. It wasn't. It was no. redesigned for that for British television ah. because they 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 were trying to de-violence it. Ah, okay. So that that that's a quirk from your childhood. Okay. That was very specifically aimed at you. Oh, <laughs> there's a nugget for you. Hey. It was it was part of the toning down of the Ninja Turtles, but actually globally it was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. All right. Um, but they were all heroes in a half shell. Yeah, yeah. Total uh, power. Uh, but it, certainly, I would get my I'd get my eighties. Do you know what I started listening to recently? What. Well, George Michael, faith. Ugh. Well, I gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. Uh, oh man, I, I reckon we could go for a stuck in my full head. revival. Unfortunately, on the stuff. only it version. Took me a decade of, like, to get rid of it. Unfortunately, the only version of that song I know is Billy Connolly's take on it. Right. <laughs> so. so the we will we will try and uh, dig a bit deeper uh, into the uh, Mega Metro City. I've got to say though, as a as a great big box of absolute 80s flashbacks i am loving this Important now question. i had a yeah have you guys seen ready player one yet no no damn it um uh, i haven't had time i haven't been home so, for more than a week since I've had, a, I've had a bit of a flick through uh, the rule book yes. um uh, we've been just we got received them um, this morning actually an updated rule book oh. um uh, with some erratas and stuff like that in it so yeah. um uh, definitely and keep an eye on it. I think that the rule book will go through a number of iterations, even during uh, the actual campaign itself, as some some of you old hands um, mm. uh, get a hold of it and uh, start to look through it. Because I'm fairly certain that the rules will be up for for download for you mm -hmm. guys um, uh, during the campaign. But it, it's um, 
It's definitely from a components perspective, um, an absolute treasure trove, mm. treasure trove of of just awesome flashbacks uh, to the eighties, guys. So definitely, definitely one worth checking out. Mm. Right, we've got a guest in the studio, Justin. Uh, yes, we have John sitting down with Charlie from Wardour Games to talk everything bolt action. Well, let's see what they have to say. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to more bolt action chat with myself and Charlie from Wardour Games. And we're going to be checking out some of the latest and greatest, uh, so some upcoming and some recent releases. And some recent releases, well. yeah. yes, yeah, um, yeah. So I'm going to just let you tell me what you're going to cool, let's going yeah, to look so at. And where to start? I suppose um, I think we'll leave some of the more exciting ones to the uh, to yeah. the end, and we'll just get through some of um, some of. I say less exciting; they're still very exciting. Still... <laughs> but uh, new plastics is always something we get yep. really excited about. So we'll do the white metal, and then we'll go into the plastics afterwards. Okay, sure. So, um, so just some nice two two, two little blisters we've got uh, we've got sort of out or yep. uh, it's on each set and the Verge releases um, a nice unit of um, US MPs. Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can get them on a camera here, nice and close. That looks pretty good. I can line them up that way. Yeah, beautifully painted as well. They are, aren't they? Who's who's your painter for these uh, guys? They come out of our studio. So. Um, one of our three fantastic studio painters. Yep. I'm not entirely sure uh, who's painted <laughs> these ones, but uh, I only just managed to sneak them out of the studio before <laughs> heading over. Oh, so they don't so. they don't know they're here. Well, they kind of knew I was in there, and we were just <laughs> filling a bag full of foam with with some lovely shiny models. But it's just it depends whether you can get in there before Paul sees you and get out before yeah. Paul catches you, <laughs> as it were. Uh, otherwise, it's slap wrists, or yep. or usually I've got to sign like a chit in blood to say if any of this comes back damaged or missing, it's my life for the uh, for the models. So. Well, co compliments to your painters because what I find is a good studio painting team really defines the oh, what am I trying to think defines the um, the aesthetic yes, of yeah. a model range, and Bolt Action has this really cool sort of well highlighted very well defined models uh in your painting set so mm. your your painters do a fantastic job every time i see anything uh coming out from them and it really brings the character out I think, does. especially with these white metal um miniatures where it is all about the character of the model because yeah. this it, it's interesting with your white metal against plastic because you've got with white metal you've got the ability to create a significant pose yeah and um, that tells a story yeah whereas with plastic obviously gives you the options as the as the you know as the hobbyist as the guy building them to to create your own um so it's yeah it's nice it's nice and then obviously the paintwork goes onto it and it yeah. really just sets it off um, so i'll be very careful with those yeah no that's yeah, that's fine <laughs> and then we've got these lovely um u.s characters do we do we know who these are? Um, we do, um, but I can't remember unfortunately. <laughs> and I'll, I'll get flogged for that when uh, when I get back to the office. But again, you know, beautiful sculpts. Um, I love this guy with the thirty cal. Yeah, it's fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And I've I've really enjoyed seeing all the the winter uniforms coming out as well because, like like I've said in in other videos to do with bolt action and wargaming in general, a lot of people focus on. Normandy and Normandy is all that summer uniform and it's all very nice and khaki and stuff and then they switched to this um, M43 uniform yes, and it's yeah it has a, a darker look to it it's a bit different aesthetic wise yes. and then when you see them well painted like that it's like no that looks sweet it does doesn't it yeah it's such a change from a, a Normandy period yeah, well, sticking on that theme of sort of winter troops we've uh, we've recently done the uh, the winter British yeah which is something we've not ventured into previously um, so these guys are, are lovely. Um, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's worth picking out some specifics, but saying that, it, I think it would be difficult to to pick your you know your favorite yeah. your favorite sculpt out. So uh, if I just pass over a few of them there, yeah, absolutely. Um, I love how the the coats have turned out. Yeah, They're the really, coats are lovely, aren't the, they? The great coats are a very sort of very iconic sort of piece of kit for for every army. Yes, you, yeah. you know it's winter when the big coats when come the big out. Coats, yes, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah, and these these all look really fantastic, and uh, just again super paint yeah, jobs all a, around. A lovely one there with it. The, the, the um, oh, with a cloak. Oh, Chef it. firing his yeah, his rifle and his cloak. I wonder if you you would have potential to paint that as a um a captured Zelt band perhaps. Yeah, a, a liberated Zelt band, I should say. Yes, yeah. <laughs> 
And I mean, you know, you could you could use him as a sniper as well because oh, yeah. of his pose and stuff. So you could take the um the scope from the plastic kit and um, oh yeah, by all means, just yes, put that on yeah, because he would look like a fantastic sniper, really really good. Um, you got a Bren gunner over there. As there well, is, yeah, yeah, him. of course, yeah. I I do love me a Bren gunner. <laughs> Such a nice, it's again a very weapon. iconic piece of uh, piece of kit as well. Yeah, really, really good. And it's nice to see that your painters also understand that British webbing was not time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the amount of times in my reenactment group where someone's turned up with a fresh paratic uniform <laughs> and you're like, something wrong with your webbing, and it's like, why? It's all brand new. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's friend. the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I think the the guys do take a lot of care um, yeah. in in the way that they do put these uh, put put paint on the models, but not just that, but the, the guys that are sculpting them as well. Just um, there's a, there's definitely a, an attention to detail without losing the character of the models. Yeah. I think you can sometimes go a little bit too far concentrating on um, you know the exact yeah. length and 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 width of webbing and stuff like that. But what what um, I what I always thought, and I don't know if, if you're going to take offense to this as a no, no. warlord staffer or not, but I always imagine um, your own in-house range of minis sort of following along the lines of the commando comic aesthetic. Yes, it's yeah. that it's a little bit bulkier. It's a, it's more of the heroic proportions. Definitely. And as long as the kit looks right, which it does, yeah, you have a very characterful mini out there. And that's anyway. the idea. And I think, you know, that it comes back to, you know, you strip it all back to the you know, the rule sets. We're yeah. very much a, a company of producing games out of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, we, it, we, it might not always suit the, the more competitive gamers because generally we're, we're a being pretzels company. Yeah. You know, if we're playing games in the office, it's, it's fun. Yeah. Um, and we'll tweak the rules whilst we're playing because it might fit... The atmosphere of that game, mm -hmm. um, and I think the same rolls into the way we produce miniatures as well. That they're meant to be characterful models, yeah. um, not direct um, historical representations. Mm -hmm. um, they're meant to have that flavour and feel of, um, of a like I say, a heroic occasion. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. It, I think... it feels like um, every soldier in your army matters. Yeah. And that that's a lovely way to to look at it. You know. Every guy is so well sculpted, and then when you look at them on the website, they're all so well painted and presented, you just think, those are my guys. When yes, I have them yeah. in the box in front of me, and I've painted them up, it's like, those are my guys. Yeah, well, those, <laughs> those lovely uh, Falls from Jaeger that you've had donated, where yeah. the gentleman's gone and, and named each man underneath the base. <laughs> yeah. I think and it's lovely to do, um, and I th it's definitely, I said, it's something I'm going to go and do. Yeah. Um, when I get home, I'm like, Berg's Jaeger, I think they're all going to get names now, because <laughs> it just gives them that, that yeah, that personality, doesn't it? You mm -hmm. think so? Oh no! When, you, it, it, when you're playing, then you think a lot more about what you're going to do with them when you yep. when you know who they are. Um, and you know, like I say, they you, you they they engender like a, a a real personality, you know, in your mind yep. when you put them on down on the table. So that's the idea. It's yeah. meant to be fun and characterful. Um, so moving into the plastics. Mm -hmm. um, so later on this year, we have plastic winter. Um, Germans. These these look superb. Yeah, there's going to be loads of options again on the sprues. Yeah. Um, oh, these just look fantastic. I like the the sort of little unshanky that this guy has. Yeah. Is that a little eagle on it as well? It is. So he has the cat badge <laughs> on it too. That is absolutely brilliant. Again, like I have adored all the winter stuff that you guys have been putting out there. Yeah. It's, it's really, really nice. I think it adds more character. I do as well. I think, like I said, I think maybe, you know, possibly because we don't see it a lot on the tabletop. Yeah. Um, you know, winter troops can only really be used on, you know, winter boards and so on and so yeah. forth. But we tend to try and base them in a sense that it's it looks like they're, you know, they're not in heavy snow. They're yeah. in, so that you can pop them on a grass mat. And play them on a grass table and still imagine that it's cold, yeah. just not covered in snow. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, there's there's tons of options. You see, we've got quite a few of them made up here. Um, it really should give you an idea of just how many different poses can be achieved uh, just from the um, from the sprues that that that'll be in the box. Yeah. Um, and follows, you know, the same suit as as all the the more recent plastic kits that we've done. Yeah. That. You know, there there will be lots of options. There'll be some arms with you know, you know uh, weapons already mounted. Mm -hmm. There'll be a few where um, you've got free hands that you can pop the stick grenades in or maps and uh, the Panzerfaust and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, but I think it's a it's a nice hint to the future as well that 
um, we're not going to stop producing yeah. new plastic yeah. uh, infantry sets. Um, and I think you know, the, it's nice to see us doing something different rather mm. than just more you know, um, non-winter troops, standard infantry. It's yeah. nice to be doing something a little bit um, left field, as it were. It, um, it really lets you have a play with all the different stuff out there because although the war only lasted, what, five, six years, yeah. something like that, the, the amount of equipment that was put together, made, produced, and then a lot of it used. Yeah. And you have, as a historical miniatures company, you have so much to look through and decide on. It's like we were saying um, during our little campaign book talk as well, that you just don't know, you're not running out of places no. to go, you're just trying to choose which, which one to go to, to go next. next. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. But the, the winter has been, a, the winter stuff's been a very good move, and it's just brought so much to it. Yeah, as well. And even from a historical sense, playing a winter army opens up other options for oh, you. Oh, definitely. Because there was stuff that only arrived in certain points of the war that yeah. you could then start using. That's right, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's been great. Now, now that we've done the infantry, yeah, we have a, a very particular little kit. <laughs> uh, a vehicle that's very dear to my heart and a vehicle that's incredibly dear uh, to my significant other's heart yeah. <laughs> because she's fallen in love with this vehicle. <laughs> it's difficult not to, though. Isn't it it really is difficult not to. I, um, um, I, b before I started to work for Warlord Games, I'd, um, I got into Bolt Action, so probably yeah. about sort of four years ago, and um, uh, we, we, the, the, the website ran a promotion called um, Mad March. Yeah. Et, uh, um, and, and that's when I picked up my first mm -hmm. um, uh, one of these. Yeah. Uh, in the original sort of resin form, but it's, it's lovely to see. Uh, look at that. <laughs> Isn't that just the most charming little military vehicle? Ah, it's you've fantastic! Ever seen? It's fantastic! Um, and again, beautifully painted, of course. And uh, do do we know the painter for this? Or was um, it I believe the these were all Derek. Mm -hmm. um, I do. Yeah, I could be wrong, um, but I'm pretty sure Derek did all of these. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the most recent one being the uh, the, 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 the the unusual the, one. the unusual one. Yeah, the yeah. flak version. So you have. This is uh, an upcoming release. This is the upcoming yes, plastic yeah. answer, obviously. And um, up until this point, you've uh, Warlords only played with option uh, like options in a kit. Yeah, there's not been many. There's been the the Panzer three. Yeah, I think the the Stug had options to do the one hundred five barrel the, options. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, and you had the the King Tiger, which had the two turrets yes, that I've yeah. discussed in an unboxing. But this is the first one I've seen where you guys have really went to town on. Getting extra for the Some options, yeah. And uh, as a, we were talking outside of the video, the the um the Zug box, yeah, which will be coming, will be very interesting. Definitely, I want to see what people can do with magnets and yeah, changing bits. Yeah, up. because we have the the regular gun, uh, so that's your seventy five millimeter. Yeah, that's one option. We then have this, which is the Flammenwerfer version, which has that big thick barrel with the flame projector in it. Yeah. That's, everybody loves a vehicle flavor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can imagine that this is a bit painful to people. Yeah. Um, so you have those, but then you have something really, really out of left field. You have this. And I've never seen and this And how before. cool is that? It is utterly amazing looking. I have never seen this particular variant before in my life. And I'm sure we'll have a number of people posting in the comments saying, well, there's no rules for it in, in, the, in the German book, or there's no rules for it in the core rule book. <laughs> well, you'd be very pleased to know that in um, in the Zug and also in the single kit when it comes out uh, afterwards, yeah. there will be the stat cards uh, for all the all the vehicles that we've been doing recently. Um, and there'll be a stat card for each version. Yeah. So the rules for said Flak uh, Hetze will be on the stat card, yeah. ready for you to go out the box. So... With the Zug, for example, yep, you, you can could, you could do one of each, yeah, if, you, if you want. Definitely build all three, yeah, um, and and have the rules sort of there at hand to be yep. able to field sort of all three on the table. But this this is something I want to point out in the kit as well because you have the three variants available in the box, yeah, and I want to see what people can do to switch out the upper hulls to allow them to use every part in the kit because I I always find that. It's a terrible waste sometimes. It is sometimes. When you're yeah. not experienced with magnets or thinking, you're planning your builds ahead, yeah. and you realize that you're not about to throw out half a vehicle, and you're like, yeah. Yeah. 
It is painful. It, <laughs> it is, painful. yeah. But I suppose that's in a, in a, in, to, to a degree, that's where the Zug for this type of tank really comes into its own. Yeah. Because you're getting three in there um, for the price of sort of two and a half at, at, at best. Yeah. Um, and then you can build all three options. Yeah. Um, yes, obviously, you're going to have some bits left over from, from the other kits as yep. you've made each one. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's nice. Again, it's it's lovely to do, you know, mm. and, and we've got some great releases coming out as the rest of the year um, rolls on for bolt action. I'm just I'm just going to bring in the other painted ones, yeah, the, sure. the regular guns, because look at the paint jobs. Yeah, the paint jobs. That, that winter, the, that version. winter one, and this and, one, and the desert is the, fantastic. The de yeah, they are so well weathered. They are so beautiful to look at. And the best thing about it is, some people will tell you, "Oh, that's a bit too much weathering and stuff," but for product photography, oh yeah. You, when you have a beautiful crisp image of that on the website, yeah. it just looks amazing. Definitely, definitely. Absolutely, yeah. And it gives it that character that we've talked about with yeah. the, the you know the infantry models. Mm -hmm. Um and the beauty of tanks is, you know, you can play a game with an armored platoon now. You know, we've yep. got the tank uh, tank war supplement as well as some tank war starter sets. Yeah. Um meaning that you can have a, a game of bolt action quite quickly. You pop your tanks together, give them a you know a, a prime, mm -hmm. and you can even prime them in a colour these days. Uh, wash them, pick out some details, and usually you're good to go. The yeah. beauty of a tank is you can constantly go back yeah. and you know paint some extra weathering on. You might want to put some kill markings on every time. You know, you, especially you're running a campaign with friends oh, yeah. and stuff. Get those kill marks on the side of the tank or around the <laughs> get the rings around the barrels or something like that. And it just yeah, there's there's something about uh, uh, you know a, a, a 28 mil scale tank that just for me um, just really gets me going. You know, I like, love the idea of um, you know, big curse reenactment and things yeah. like that. So they the 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 in house warlord kits I've seen recently have really stepped up their game yeah, as well. Definitely. You guys have a lot of talent working in the background to get all this stuff together. Yeah. And um clearly because of that talent they've also got a lot of passion for what they're doing. Yeah. And you can tell that in the kits because when you open up a warlord in house kit, you know that that detail is there for a reason yeah. and that you know, sometimes details can be omitted, but that's just because it's a gaming miniature and yes, you're not looking at yeah. the scale model yeah. side of things. Yeah. And that's where some other companies that come into this market find a bit of a stumbling block because they don't know that war gamers don't need the scale yeah. model level. No. And sometimes that can be a bit of a hindrance. Yeah, we want, I think we want the detail, but we don't want the... The the the, the you don't need the build time. Yeah, the build time. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And that's part. You know, that's part of the hobby for those. You know, for the scale modelers. Yeah. But we want to be able to build a beautiful kit and get it on the table so mm -hmm. we can play some games with it. Um, and I think you know we talked about the Marder off camera. Yeah. Um, I I picked up the Marder Zug, and normally I get through the first tank and think, oh, I'm going to build another two. <laughs> With the Marder, I was like, oh, I built another two, and I was straight into it. It was the quickest three tanks I've ever built. Yeah. Because it just did one after the next after the next. Uh, and then the extra little details where it comes with the extra um, shells and stuff yep. that you can pop in the basket at the back, and mm -hmm. uh, with the crew that you can pop on the Marder is really nice. And you'll see the little um, tank commander with his head popping out of the uh, out that of, first one that you showed. Out of the ambush one, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's got great character about yep. him. You know, there's some lovely... Um, sort of expression on his face there, and again, <laughs> fantastic paint job in in putting in a bit of uh, a bit of uh, evening shade on his on his on his chin and his cheeks. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, it's nice. Yeah, it's, it's lovely when we've got some new sort of plastic kits to talk about. Yeah, and especially when vehicles come along because I'm I'm always throwing the critical eye at it. <laughs> yeah, I know, and it's good. And I so I think we appreciate the, a critical eye over these kits, and obviously we'll we'll do an unboxing or you'll do an unboxing. Yeah. Uh, at, a, at a later date, um, when, once we've got the, the, the production, but it won't be long before this is on the shelves. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll probably go in trouble saying this, but we're sort of hinting back to the um, the plastic infantry. I know we've got at least another three plastic infantry kits to come this year. Very nice. Um, some quite sort of theatre specific, uh, and some rehashes of some old mm. kits. So um, bringing some of those old infantry kits back up to the standard of the new yeah. plastic warlord infantry yeah. sets which and it, it's it's a good thing to revisit some of the oh, kits definitely. as well because as you're as you bring in new talent into your sculpting parts yes, and your yeah. your casting and stuff like that you're 
your ability to put out a new kit or a good kit as well just yes. increases and increases. Oh yeah, you know we wouldn't revisit it just for the sake of it. It's the, the idea is to revisit it and make it better. Yeah, and I think there's no question when you look at the uh, the likes of the Waffen SS and the the British Airborne, yeah. the US Airborne. Even when we go back to the US Marines, mm -hmm. there's a significant increase in quality. Yep. Uh, in those kits as time goes on technology changes like say we get new talent in yep. which have just got an eye for a different type of detail um it's nice to go back then and, and give that love to some of the older kits yep. to bring them up to to standard with the with the, with the I, new ones i always find when you when the um was it maybe the german grenadiers when they first came out i think that was the first kit i got my hands on for yeah. you guys that had the uh like the weapon already onto one arm yes yeah and i thought after having done the Russian army in here, I thought, oh, they yeah. know, they understand <laughs> yes, now, yeah, and this is, this is a real step forward. Yeah, yeah. And I heard so many people saying exactly the same thing. They were like, oh, finally, no more floating gun syndrome, because yeah. sometimes it's a bit awkward to get that arm to that arm and to match the arms onto the weapon. <laughs> yeah, and it just, it reduces that build time, which yeah. we talked about, which is really important, I think. And then, but to a degree, it gives you a lot more flexibility with the kits, yeah. because you can... You know, yes, they, they, they may be designed for sort of two arms, but you can always do them with one and sort of gun held up yeah. uh, whilst he's checking something in his pack or he's pulling a map out or he's yeah. got his binoculars or depending on what sort of try and sort of feel and character yeah. you're trying to put into the model. So, yeah, there's some lovely, exciting things. And this is literally just a, um, a real small sort of snippet of what we have yeah. got sort of on the horizon. It's uh, it's really interesting and it's i'm really glad to see a plastic hats are coming out yeah. because we, <laughs> yeah. we just we recently on the website covered the the panzer 38t yeah and the martyr before that and yeah like both beautiful kits really really nice no definitely um so it's been good to have you on just to That's have a little been chat an absolute pleasure and if you guys enjoyed the video leave a comment down below let us know what you think of the little plastic hats are and uh hopefully you'll be looking forward to a full unboxing when we get them through yeah and uh, when we see all the infantry coming in as well so guys as always thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon thank you hi i'm madman from monolith and you're watching the weekender on beastsoftwar.com Always nice to have the guys from Warlord in the studio. Mm. Uh, nice to actually meet Charlie. I believe this was his first, first visit across with us. So, Did nice, you nice see guy. what Warlord did for uh, Blood Red Skies at Salute? Yes. yes. With the, with the, the, the aircraft yeah, yeah. car. When the guys were across for filming oh. with us, they were just like, oh, by the way, oh. skill aircraft car. And I'm just like, ah. Editors. Get the picture of the aircraft yeah. carrier in there. It's We've been doing a lot of the Blood Red there. Sky stuff um, just this yeah. last little I while. Think John's in love. Uh, it, it's just been great. We've been seeing our uh, our aircraft mm. fleets. Mm. Would you call them? Yeah, uh, squadrons. 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 Uh -huh. fleets, fleets are navy. Uh -huh. <laughs> our aircraft squadrons have been building up. I that think is. we're now up to four squadrons. Uh, I believe it's actually five. Of course it is. Because we've got the the Spitfires, the Messerschmitts, the P fifty one Mustangs, the Zeros, and now the Yak ones. Yeah. And I want an aircraft carrier. You want an aircraft carrier? We are going to do an aircraft carrier. I, I just want them to come out with a model for Douglas Bader. He's the only World War II flying ace I know, and he was a madman. I, I love think it. Well, tell us about him. Yeah, he was a British ace. He was a he. He flew in World War Two. Yep. Uh, was shot down o over France. Mm -hmm. Esca managed to escape from the hospital once. Mm -hmm. This guy had no legs at the start of World War Two. Yeah. Going oh, at the start of World War Two. Yeah. He lost his legs during the peacetime between World War One and World War Two in a flying accident. So he was. became a pilot with no legs. Yeah. And it, they, it's suggested now that that's why he was such a good pilot because uh, he didn't have the blood rushing to his uh, feet. So he could do the G <laughs> force. Yeah. He could do tighter turns because the, the blood yeah. would stay up in his upper torso. Yeah. That and the fact he had to do something because he couldn't spend the rest of his life just arsing about. Oh. So. <laughs> oh. Sad. Come on, no, man. No, no, the no, guy no. was a hero. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, he, he can take he that was, one. He was, <laughs> he was absolutely brilliant. This guy, as I said... Bailed out over France. I think he lost one of his legs. Yeah. Ends up in the hospital and then escapes. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you mean he leg. lost one of his legs? I thought he had no legs. Yeah, uh, one of his fake legs. Oh, one of his fake legs. So he had, <laughs> of course, you'd have to fly with fake legs because yeah. you, you have to control yeah, yeah. parts of the aircraft with yeah. your feet, don't you? So he lost one of his false legs. And what then, an incredible yeah. thing. But here's the thing about pilots, right? Especially back in those days. We look at pilots now and they're all very straight laced. Yes. Okay. Mm. 
But pilots back then had to be utterly bonkers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, did... like, there, there was a certain nobility to air combat back then. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I've, I've heard, heard stories of, you know, enemy pilots seeing someone who's just been flying their heart out, mm-hmm. seeing them running low on fuse, fuel, shot to hell, burning for home. Yeah. They've got the line on them and they don't shoot them. They say, you know what? Nah, you, you've earned it. We'll leave that, you to another day. John yeah. earlier today was actually telling me a story about Douglas' father. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, John found the This Is Your Life segment they did yes. on him. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, the jo- uh, Douglas father met the one of the German flying aces, and yeah. they became friends. And I have, uh, yeah, I am yeah. not surprised in the slightest. No, it gets by better that. Yeah. because he asked if he could meet the guy while he was uh, in occupied territory. And okay, took him to the FL, met the guy. Oh, can I uh, can I see your Messerschmitt? Sure. Can, can, can I can I sit in it? Okay. He took off it. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, yeah. I was like, can, can I take it around the, uh, the field for a spin? Uh, uh, maybe not. No, no. <laughs> he what, tried what, it. He chanced what, it. What the German pilot actually said on the same was, I was very glad that it was not my decision to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a horrible German accent. I apologise. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, I, it's um, the, the stuff at Ward Order been coming out was just amazing. And Blood Red Skies is superb. Mm. We are definitely, definitely going to have to have a look at it for an aircraft carrier at 1-200 yeah. scale. There is some amazing 1-200 scale naval stuff out there. Yeah. So I was looking at some of the battleships and things just thinking, oh, you're going to have so much fun with this. You, you could get my favourite ship, the Texas. The Texas? Yes. Now, she was actually a, a World War One ship, mm-hmm. and she was at D-Day. Yeah. And she was given her targets inland. The problem mm-hmm. is the targets were out of range. Mm-hmm. So what her captain did was he takes the ship, Plus the ballast tanks on one side, tips the ship to mm-hmm. increase the angle of the guns. I don't target. believe it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's I can just, just imagine unreal. someone else going, uh, calling Texas, calling Texas. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just lining up. Hang on. We're just lining up. So you flood ballasts on one side just to, the to boat, list the boat. And lift the angle of the guns up so he can hit his targets. <laughs> it's clever, isn't it? Oh, yeah, because he'd be, he'd be kind of tilting, maybe tilting. Fr- oh, no, he'd tilt forward. So as to, to get the trajectory, oh, just incredible. Actually, to tilt the guns he... up higher to get the better trajectory for the arc of the shells. Oh. He, uh... just, I bet the sailors on board were thankful that that worked, because otherwise it would have been, okay, we're still not quite got the angle, everybody run over to that side. Run over to that side, yep. <laughs> um, right, um, we, have, uh, we have a new segment. We yes. haven't a name for it because yes. we can't get stupid memes out of our heads. Yeah. Um, uh, but we're going to we're going to be uh, taking. We've got Warren meets Matt. Yeah. And now we've got a little alternative that we're going to feed in from time to time. Yeah. Where it's um, it's all your base are belong to us. <laughs> <laughs> or what else? It's uh, all about that base. All about that base. That we, buttery biscuit the base. Buttery biscuit base. <laughs> we're going to have a look at some bases. So uh, just put your I'm, suggestions I'm in below for that. Day. Right. Do you want to go first? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, we're going to be featuring micro arts for this one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've all got micro arts, but everybody knows that my my horrid dead little soul has belonged to chaos for years. So yeah. obviously, I'm going to pick chaos bases. All right. Okay. So, so what did you what did you go for? So these are actually really lovely, nice and spiky. So be careful not to poke yourself. Yes. <laughs> and I need to see if I can get the spikes to not hang up on the bag. Okay. Yeah. They are super spiky. What's those spikes don't hurt your bag now? So. <laughs> aye, aye. Okay. There we go. Right. Yep. So if you show those, I'll get the okay. smaller ones out. So but there we go. got nice chaosy rocks with tons and tons of spikes and chains. Oh, Justin, they are nice. And, mm. you know, you get these painted, I get a bit of a dry brush of silver onto the chains, mm-hmm. and then grab yourself something like a, a null oil or a, a strong tone from the army painter. Yeah. And those are going to come up gorgeously. So I'm going to probably prime black. Yeah. Dry brush grey across the rocks, maybe two layers of dry brushing, mm-hmm. then get the silver down and then wash the lot, black the rim, yeah, and you're done. done. Do you know what else would look really, really effective on this? What's that? Um, if you primed it all um, like a desert yellow, okay, yeah. okay, or a brown, uh-huh. and uh, dry brushed the, the, the sand bits desert yellow, uh-huh. then painted the rocks jet black. Ooh, obstinate. Okay. Oh, that could be um, maybe give them a bit of a gray, a light gray dry brush, just to, to give I them a bit the, of texture, the and then rust all of the chains. Mm. 
and that way you would have that that desert with black yeah. rocks. It'd be such mm. high contrast. You could also that would do... also look good in Dark Age, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Very mm -hmm. much so. That was my first thought when they yeah, cropped. You out. could also do uh, a green on the raised rocks. Yeah. And make it a little more necrony. You could. Yeah. You know, so make the rocks green with a bit of glow on them. Yeah. So. Or make it more nurgly, make it slimy and sickly in between them, because you've got some effect paints out there in the market now. Mm -hmm. So what models would you choose for these sort of, this oh, range? Well, uh, well, Maybe um, not no, these bases in particular, no, but this no, range. But yeah, but this, this yeah. particular range, because they do lots of different base sizes and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Personally, I, I, I would suggest like, Chaos Demons would be great for this. Oh, jeepers, look at it. Just look at the... Look at the texture and the detail on mm. that. Yeah, you can even see the the roughly carved. You've got like almost chaos stars mixed in there. Yeah. Oh, that is a wonderful, wonderful looking base. You know they've come on so much in these last years, mm. haven't they? Mm. Well, it's the beautiful, to... beautiful resin pour on these, mm. and the the detail is just lovely. The interesting thing for me is they're able to actually do the undercuts now with whatever casting technique they're using. Yes. Because you remember a lot of times whenever you used to see bases, the texture will go up to the edge. Yeah. But whenever this is under, you can see there's an overhang there yeah. that it has to pour down past and come back up through. Mm -hmm. So the way they've designed that is really nice. Well, the way they're doing that is they're using a nice soft RTV rubber, mm -hmm. and they're just probably um, yeah, remolding it a lot of the time, so because mm -hmm. it'll just come out. Yeah. But the, the casting processes have just come on leaps and bounds over yeah. the years. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely a beautiful range, that yeah. one. Right, so I have one for you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I went for um, one called Arcane because Ooh. I'm just really into my, my kind of my fantasy settings at the moment. Oh yeah, yeah I, think, um, I think I've seen these before on some of our painted minis. And I'm I'm into my kind of my dungeon uh, crawlers. Yeah. I and love stuff. these ones. Yes. Uh, this is exactly why I picked them because um, what do you see these bad boys? Um, so I'm into my dungeon crawlers. Yes. Um, I'm trying to get us a, a, a cool game of Hero Quest and stuff recently, and I thought to myself, if I want to have a look at some bases. I want to have a look at some bases that will work in dungeons and things, um, because I find dungeony style bases to be so so flexible. So when yes. you, you see these, and they're very easy for basing on. Yeah. Them. So these are the arcane range. Now, will you check this out? Just look at that. Mm. So yes, um, again, they come in uh, lots of different styles. Um, not all uh, they don't all have to be this oval shape. I just happen to like the the ovals. I think they're they're a lovely looking shape. Something mm. different, where you can base a miniature and have almost like a little mini story. You know, weapons on the ground or something in fr in front of them. You know, tell a bit more of a story about a miniature. Yeah. That was one of the reasons why I really loved when um, Games Workshop up the size. Of the 25 mil base see. to the 30 mil base because you're able to tell more of a story mm. on the base itself. The, so the detailing of the yeah. engraving in this, this one Isn't I particularly like with its oh my god! Well, yeah. Right, Warren, check this out. Look at that. Right, here's a detail for you. Yeah. See this one? Mm -hmm. See right there between the rocks? There's a little leaf. Yeah. And you can see the veins on the leaf. Let me just I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but you can see the veins on oh, that leaf. Goodness me! Right in there. So that we, yeah. You can. That's that's incredibly skillful. There. And there's another wee leaf there. Yeah, but I tell you what, these would be great for. You see, if you want to practice doing like magical glues with an airbrush, yeah, get yourself a ton of these and just start practicing. I tell you what, who I or what I would love. Like you, you're asking what models mm. um I would put on this. I'd very, very happily um uh put my uh, stormcast eternals yeah uh, onto yeah. these bases i, I think uh, stormcast eternals on this kind of stuff would look amazing i tell you who else would look absolutely cracking on bases like this um obviously the right shape and size mm. dark angels nice that's a fair one dark uh, angels would look amazing on these anything cthulhu role-playing related yeah or if you want to do some weird world war yeah, ben, ben? Yeah, I was looking at the the arcane base you're talking about there. I think they'd be really cool for obviously we've got a confrontation Kickstarter that's on at the moment. They'd mm. really work nicely with the Rackham stuff. I oh, think yes. that'd be really cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. I would even say Malifaux maybe. Yeah, yeah Malifaux even Malifaux work, actually. Yeah. That's the great thing about this particular style of base yeah. though, is it, it is very it, it is highly, highly versatile. I want the rest of this. I want to yeah. see the other the other shapes and sizes of this this particular yeah. type because I just look at it. The the details and the sculpting is just beautiful. You see, you could stick like monster stuff onto this as well. If you had like a chaos space marine army, put some blood spatters down on it, make it look like they're invading a the city. Yeah. Oh, do you know who else would go well on that? Grey knights. Yeah. 
Oh, it's just a, a gorgeous right. pick. Yeah. Sambo, what, yeah. did, what did you go well, for? My one is also a bit chaotic, but <laughs> I've chosen it because of the potential I see in it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So these are the possessed bases. Now, can I just say, I'm putting these all back in my bag. Don't touch. Nobody is to touch these. These are now mine, and I will be using these. Right, bit of advice. Do not touch. Lick your bag. There you go. Now no one's going to touch It's all you. well and truly licked. It is safe. Okay. <laughs> you do know I'm the one who has to organize all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay. those are nice, <laughs> so we don't touch those. Okay. Well, I don't want to get a reputation of being a bag licker now, so it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Sam, whip your bag out there, do we see what right. we've got? <laughs> these are the possessed faces, so... Ooh, these are interesting. These are obviously some sort of demon world, and you can see the energy oh. breaking them apart, and monsters starting to appear oh, through the like cracks. tentacles and yeah. swirls yeah, and stuff like, like that. Look at this faces, one in particular. Look oh, yeah. Dude, look at that one! See his little faces coming out? Yeah. yeah. Look at that one's got a big face coming out. Uh and then I thought that was like water, here. but it's just no. even cooler than water, no. isn't it? It's it is it's, supposed to be like magic and there's demons hidden in it. Hence the it's called the possessed. And it is very cool. However, I would not use them for ca something chaotic. Right? No. What caught my imagination with this was the most recent Age of Sigma release, the Idaneth Deep King. Oh. And you say how they're like water. If I Reach back here. Here's one we prepared earlier. <laughs> Ooh! Nice and nice. Now, so, this is one of the Edeneth uh, Deepkin. Mm. And in their backstory, in order to bring their sea creatures on land and everything, they use magic to summon an etheric ocean wherever they go. Uh -huh. Basically mixing air and water. Oh, son, magically. these are perfect for yes. that. I'm, I might remove some of the, if I was to use these, I'd probably file away some of the claws and stuff. But, and I would, I, because I'm not it sure is... I would, I, I think I would even keep the claws. And do you know what I'd maybe try and do? It'd be very difficult to do, you need to be a really yeah. good painter, but I'd freehand little patterns on the claws. Uh, like little magical kind of like designs, white designs Ooh. and stuff on the actual claws. The, the creatures from the deep appearing. Yeah. yeah I like that. One of the whole things about them is that they do bring their environment with them. Yeah. You can end up with shipwrecks appearing in the middle of a farm when if they're raiding the village. Oh, that's um, amazing. So I would actually put maybe some tufts of normal grass on the stone. Yeah. And then see if I can find some seaweed type, type things as well to fit around them. Do you know what so I'd be tempted makes... to do? I'd be, you, need to, you need to sit down with John and learn a little bit of airbrushing. Sam. I've been mm. dying to do right? that. Because this stuff here, if you airbrushed up right, and Zenith uh, up or did all the kind of the watery kind of uh, stuff in a glowy mm. kind of airbrushy effect mm. and then hand painted out the rock areas, it would look like glowy ethereal kind of See, mystical waters and stuff I, going over the land i think that could be incredible i think you could get that effect without your airbrush or or no no but the airbrush will give it it will give it a really glowy ethereal mm. look or if you painted it, it painted all the land first mm -hmm. and then airbrushed it if you were careful with the airbrushing you could almost get a glow effect off it to give it yeah, almost, the overflow. Uh, almost a kind of like a source lighting I from like the actual from the actual water itself i like that idea a lot you know yeah. so uh, it, so if you painted your rocks a kind of like a, a light gray mm. and then i would i would uh, after you've done that i'd put some bits of static grass and stuff here and there but i love the backstory of the, yeah. these guys the, bringing the environment with them these have guys, we any more of these dudes we, have we spruce we and have, things we're gonna have a look we at. have indeed if i may reach down over here awesome this has been the most exciting release yes. in about yeah. five years for me. So I have um, been that that, that but her fanboy about losing <laughs> my Warhammer yeah. uh, fantasy battles for a long time. It, it was the most important game system for me. Uh, I miss it. But these what a beautiful book. These guys oh, have oh, me excited for oh. it again. The art from Games Workshop these days is on point. Look what do you at think, that. Dan? Oh, just yeah, beautiful. the the Ardeneth Deep Kim have, have captured an aesthetic that is almost entirely Age of Sigma. Yeah, uh, like when you think of Age of Sigma now and exactly 
what the aesthetic and the, the, the look behind it all is, they've pretty much got this down mm. to a T. And you kind of saw it a little bit with the sort of crowd drawn overlords as well, but they had that almost unmistakable dwarf still quality to them. Whereas the Adeneth Deep can go a little bit beyond what elves are, which mm. I think is very cool. So. And, and what do you what do you know about them, Ben? Have you any, uh, any well cool I'm sure Sam can correct me on this anyway, but um from what I've seen of the Adeneth Deepkin, they were some of the first elves ever created by Teclis within the yeah. new mortal realms. And when they came to life, they were still affected by the darkness from being within Slaanesh's belly. And so their souls were always withered and nasty and horrible. And so Teclis tried so hard to get them to work and uh, as a faction. But what happened was that they could never find peace with themselves. And so what they did is they retreated down to the depths of the oceans to try and hide from the world and contemplate what they should do next. As a race, they started to try and procreate and create new life and new elves to exist within the world of, of, of Age of Sigmar. But these children would always die when they were very young because their souls would wither and die. And so now the Ideneth Deepkin have realized that the way that they can create their race and uh, become great again is to go and steal the souls of other creatures and put them into their own bodies. So they started off doing this with sea creatures, but the sea creatures weren't powerful enough. And so now what they do is, as Sam was saying earlier, is they raid onto the shores and take their great armies with them and they capture people, drag them back down into the depths, tear their souls from their bodies and put them into their new elven forms. Um, so yeah, they're not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> they're not <laughs> nice, but they're not straight up evil either they're not yeah. chaos they're mm -hmm. not forces they're, of destruction yeah. yeah they're still order uh, mm. and it's almost a sense of the idea that the other sort of more resplendent forces of order tolerate them being there because of their 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 birthright and the, f the fact that they are born from techless and his magics and stuff it's a little bit like what we saw with the daughters of cain they're horrible horrible people murderous yeah. horrible people but they're still fighting on the side of order because they are all working against the forces of destruction and chaos that still reign out there in the in the world so yeah, yeah. right cool. well um firstly i want to show you that some e eel riders because we still have a screw yeah. some screw the, to look at Achalian guard. the Achalian guard now, the Achalian uh there, there, there are three main strata to, uh, in the Deepkin society. Mm -hmm. There are the Namati Thralls, who who we do have here, who are the ones who need the souls to survive. Yeah. Then there are the upper echelons, like the Akalian and the Isharan, who were born with fully functioning souls. Yes. I will say, on that particular sprue warren, yeah. the eel body is cast in a it's, single it's component. Just, yeah. I'm just looking at that, yeah. Because normally not you would see that two components. Yeah, it's an excellent piece of kit. Nice bit of design Look there. Look at all the added extras that are available on that. Can this box build different units? Yes, it can be built as two different variants. Uh, I'll just steal the book over here to find out what their well, names actually, are. Well, actually, we can find out because they'll be on the back of this. Yeah. So there's the... Uh, a Lokian Prince? A Lokian Prince is like their unit champion. Alright, so there's the Elf Riding Warrior Nobility. And yeah, that's, the, that's all of them. An Archean Morsar Guard. Here we are. Yeah, the Morsar Guard, which is what that guy I've built With the big there. crest on his head. Yeah. yeah, he's one of the Morsar Guard. Uh-huh. And then there's the Ishlean Guard. Yeah. Yeah, who I look a bit more Dark Elf sort of style. Mm. Um, I tell you what, that range is so collectible. I love though, it. Isn't no, it? I, w oh. I don't even play Age of Sigma. I want to collect this range. I love the yeah. models. Um, yeah. yeah, so you have your two your two options yeah. here, actually. So One of the cool things about these guys, I Morsar think the, Guard. Yeah, the Morsar Guard actually the, have a bit of range the to Shailen them. Guard. They, uh, they use the natural electricity their eel give. The instructions creates. are superb. In mm -hmm. this, what a really, really great piece of work yeah. that is. That's one thing okay. I noticed. Games Workshop again with their three D uh, design and stuff. Their instructions are really easy to follow. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so that's one yeah. set. Then who, there, are, these are the Marty. And then the Marty Thralls, who are the basic foot soldiers of the. Uh huh. Let's see if we can get a bit closer on that there. So these are the ones who've who were born with withered souls and needed to have. Needed to be fueled by some of okay. their birth. Right, let's get them out. Do we see? If we can. Okay, there we go. So let's have a have a, a, a browse around the sprue on this. Oh heck! The the detail on these mm. is incredible. Again, 
Games Workshop have always done technically flawless kits, but these have a, a certain charm to them that I'm really, really digging. Mm -hmm. Even on the, the eel body, seeing the little wrinkles in the skin mm. yeah. is a really, really nice, just little extra touch of detail that the sculptor has put in there. Very well detailed. Here we've got some more torsos here, weapon arms. There seems to be quite a lot of selection on the weapon arms there, you can see. Well, the, Loads the, of lovely, beautiful spikes and lovely kind of swishes and turns on the sculpts of the weapons. They're so stylish. If these so, are your main so line stylish. Fruits, you're going to expect that, that versatility of weapons. Mm -hmm. Really, really beautiful. Yeah. Um, we'll have a quick look at the book that, that came with it. Yeah. To give you a now, feel for what you get yeah. in there. There are actually two variants of Namati, not in that set. Yeah. And the other one, which I believe are the Reavers, were they released this weekend, Ben? Or? Uh, yes, they're coming to pre-order this weekend, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, but we'll go into that in a little bit when we look at some of the new releases and things. So. Yeah. So, yeah, last of the previous ones we've got here, we have the Eidolon of Matlan. Okay. So this... If yeah. Just have I just, a look at him. I just found out while I was sitting there with it that that's actually a sleeve. And yeah. Here we have a bo box. This model blew me away when we looked at it a couple of weeks back. Mm. Um, just look at that. Yeah, do you want to take this it. one? Yeah. It's got the two variants. So here we have... There's the Eidolon of Matlan in the aspect of the storm. Mm -hmm. And on the back, the aspect of the sea. Which is the right. one Justin just was building look. earlier. Uh, now, Justin, you, you built this, yeah, didn't so you? Yeah, the, so there's no point opening the box. It's all off the screws. Uh-huh. Well, I just want to oh. have a, a quick look and see what was in it. So there was uh, basically two, a big sprue and a little sprue. Yeah. And, a, and a full, you know, full color assembly instructions, guys. You know, it's like, oh, my word. Tell you what, the build for this yeah. took me about 45 minutes. 45 minutes to build it. Yeah. Now, I wasn't being incredibly careful. I'm sure there's some people that will go over every single mold line, but I didn't really see all that many. Yeah. All that um, everything is, is designed to be monoposed on it, and it gives you a really dynamic finish. Uh, would you field more than one of these guys? Uh, so... No, I think you only field the one. Yeah. I do like the backstory for these guys, because it captures some of the tragedy of this race. Uh -huh. They... Mathlan was the god, elf god of the sea in the world that was, the old Warhammer world. Yeah. Until all the elf gods were killed by Slaanesh. And Teclis taught the new elves about those old gods. Mm. Uh, so he, this, the Eidolon of Mathlan is actually them summoning an aspect of Mathlan by using all of their racial memories of him. It's basically their memories of a dead god made manifest. manifest. Mm -hmm. The sense of motion they've captured in that water effect. It's not water effect. I'm just sitting there looking at that going, you can hardly see. It's You, you don't notice the joins. Yeah, they actual, you know, they've made a maze of it so that it looks like it's just hanging in midair. It's, it's just very incredible, incredible skill isn't used it? There. Mm. It's so beautiful. That, and it's quite solid on the base, which was something I was worried about when I first saw this. Yeah. With there being such fine connection points, he's quite solid. No, no, that's, there's no, no issue there. It gets a little bit, you'll want to make sure you've got some yeah. good battle foam or something for this. Yeah. Because, you know, it's... The delicate bits are, It yeah, is going it is to be hard delicate. plastic, so... But I tell you what, everything in Age of Sigmar is really delicate these days. There's so True many... Enough fine bits um, just uh, hanging off. Yeah, but that that seems to be the, the style at the minute. The the sculptors these days seem to be doing that. They like having the finer details yeah. that they can pull it off. That range, yeah, that range is extraordinary. Mm. Hands down, mm -hmm. extraordinary. Whether you play the game or not, it, it, as, yeah. as I've said before, the collectability of that particular range. I, 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 I want to yeah. see the guy on the turtle. I, I, I'm waiting. The the I, I, well, I'm determined to buy that when it comes What out. I'm waiting for is to see the Golden Demon painters whenever they get their hands on this. They are going to make this model. I mean, it's already gorgeous, mm -hmm. but they're going to make it absolutely shine. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. Okay, right. Wait, by the that, way, there's more. There's more. Ben. Well, yeah, so... Um, Obviously, we were just talking a little bit about there about what the stuff has been coming out recently, and obviously, what's coming out this weekend is actually some new characters. Um, so, what you're going to be able to pick up from Games Workshop this weekend is a dual kit again, which allows you to create either a special character, so Volturnus Hiking oh. at the Depths. Oh, so yes. he's the big main character that you'll be using in your forces, uh -huh. or you can use him to make an Actelian King instead. So oh, that one. Someone... 
Yeah, that's a little bit slightly uh, not a special character, so not someone independent. Mm -hmm. This is somebody that could be used multiple times throughout your force. You've got the options for it there as well. Yeah, I want the and then also uh, what um, Sam was saying about the Namati is we've also got the Namati Reavers. So you've now got the ranged option for your force there as well as the melee one going on as well. So yeah, some very cool stuff that's coming out from Ezra Shop. And obviously, I'm pretty sure the next week's going to be Turtles. Oh, yeah, we shall see. <laughs> please, please send me some turtles. <laughs> On right. the Matty, I love the fact that they've actually sculpted some with arrows, some without. Yeah. Because that's one thing I always find is missing in some ranges is whenever you have a bowman with the arm back, but there's no arrow there. Show me, bring it up there to, to, just to see. So you see you've got this guy here. Uh huh. Has his up bow and arrow, arms back. Yeah. The other one without. So this one looks like he's fired. Yeah. This one looks like he's about to fire. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice Do you know what I think that. is extraordinary about those models? Mm. The faces. Mm. Yeah. The faces are absolutely Very wonderful. Very otherworldly. Aren't they great? Uh, you know, as as elf models go, they are just amazing. Mm. Absolutely amazing. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, we have another guest. Yes. We You're do. having a sit down with Chris from Darker Days Radio. Of course, to find out what the hell he's been up to recently. Right, <laughs> let's see what Darker Days Radio is up to. Join us for Kingdom Death Monster all weekend on twitch.tv forward slash beasts of war. Hi everybody, I've been joined by Chris from Darker Days Radios to get a bit of an update on what you've been up to since the last time we saw you, man. Yeah, a you've fair been busy. amount. A fair amount for guys that, you know, we do it part time, we've got jobs and everything as well, so um, we try and fit our hobby in and do the best we can. So, should we start with minis? Because yeah. it's the pretty pictures. Um, so oh, what, pretty mini. what have we got that I've painted recently that's related to some of the stuff we've been recording yeah. and also um, stuff that's upcoming or people are playing. Um, so let's start with this boy. <laughs> this, so Okay, this, this, this is the biggest one you've got. Here. Yeah, I think it's uh, nice to bring it on because the lighting in here is slightly different to what I've done with photographs. So this is yeah. the Gorm. So this is a monster that you can use to swap in for the White Lion. <laughs> Really? So you can start your campaign fighting this thing. Uh, how much worse is this thing? Not much more worse, but the AI cards for it mean it's better to uh, strike at the sides rather than the rear or the front. Yeah. So it's like hunting an elephant. This thing is... It's well, it's quite a bit bigger. If you give me like a regular survivor... A uh, regular survivor there. Yeah, just so that we can show the sort of scale comparison. Um, so there's your regular survivor compared to it. So this thing is pretty damned big. Yeah. And scary. Yeah. Uh, the survivor that you passed me, who is this? Okay, so that comes from the Gorm set. So it's a regeneration suit pinup model that actually comes in the kit. Oh. But it's actually a piece of equipment you can make. So that's why I've gone for this weird kind of two tone kind of purples and stuff to yeah. keep it in keeping with the monster itself. Yeah. I like the, the little flash of green that's running down through it. Yeah. It's very nice. And then from the same kit, this is one of the first ones I've made that's multi part. Okay. So that's the using the Gorm armor and you can see he's got this massive great axe, spiked armor. Yeah. Uh, and again it's illuminated and kind of gooey. Yeah. I like the the bigger lantern that this guy's rocking about. Yeah. With. So you've got yeah you've got those that you can use on different miniatures. So again, typical Kingdom Death, you can ma mix and match your models. Yeah, yeah, it's it's one of the coolest things I actually recently saw was someone went a little bit uh, uh, skew f and actually took the the full Kingdom Death monster set, magnetized it uh, their people. Yeah. Whoever you are, sir, well done. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, okay, so if we continue, what's from the new expansion from yeah. the one point five update? Um, so let's start with that's the. Yes. Newborn, I say newborn. The adolescent, adolescent survivor. survivor armed yeah. with a whip. Which is a little bit smaller than regular, but yeah. really nicely so done. So again, you can compare to her, that you can get an idea of size difference. Yeah, so a little regular shorter. Survivor. You... And yeah, even with this character bent down, they're still a little bit taller, I think. Yeah. And then we have uh, the old man survivor Yeah. with the massive bone club, which is the new weapon in the set. Yeah. Really nice touch. I like the fact that he's got super long hair, but he's going bald. Yeah, he's kind of got that kind of Greek kind of look to him, like Zeus kind yeah. of style. Yeah, although the the work you've done on the face, he actually has kind of that that drunkard red nose yeah, and cheeks. That was nice what I was touch. going for. It 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 has worked out really really well. And then the other new model from the set is uh, of course the new man. is the new um final boss. Yeah. So, so he's like Lantern Year thirty odd. 
or something else. Yeah. If we eventually make it there. If we make it. <laughs> Hopefully. Because, uh, I mean, like, we, with Chris over, we have been playing more games of this. Oh. Uh, and, yeah, we, we... We've had a hard time. We, we, we take a few hits. We take a few hits. It's going to be a good one to watch when those are ready to be put out. Uh, what else we got? Um, we've got this guy, who is a resin model for uh, what's called the Warlord. I will be very careful if this is resin, then, because I, I, last thing I want to do is break a beautiful piece so, of miniature on camera. No, I, I think they're going to be an expansion in the new wave. I can't oh, quite remember which shield. kit he comes with. The but shield is beautiful. Again, an opportunity to do non-metallic metals to death yeah. on it. Um, works really well and his actual two-pronged spear looks great as well yeah nice work chris really and then nice this is also resin and this is the flower witch so in kingdom death in 1.5 mm -hmm. one of the new expansions is the abyssal woods campaign yeah. so you need to have spidicules and the flower knight for it right but it is a completely new campaign much like the dragon king or the sunstalker gives you yeah so this so will be starting from year zero yeah new final bosses yeah new everything because you go into the abyssal woods ah. and there's the flower witch there's mm. the flower witch disciples uh mm. what else is there uh and there's that new big the goblin king i believe it's the big kind of weird chicken kind of monstery thing that's got wings bones and a mask it's yeah. it's complete madness and yeah it's going to be a huge set yeah, I love the basing work you've done on this one with the red flowers growing in. Yeah, I, it. yeah, it was just again to thematically add, add some yeah, and add some extra contrast with colours. Yeah, uh, to break it up a bit. Yeah, and then the the hair with the hands coming out through it is really creepy. Is that? Oh yeah, there is hands. Yeah, I there are hands. hands. Coming out it's been a while. Hair. So yeah, I bought it to paint, but obviously, oh no, I didn't. Did I buy it to paint? Or did I get gifted it? I think I actually got gifted it by my co-host. Yeah. Um, Lovely piece of work. Yeah. Um, so that's Kingdom Death stuff being painted, but obviously yeah. that is not the end of the tasks. No. Um, so that was recently featured in White Dwarf, um, which was great after Ooh. having worked for Games Workshop in the past and painting for so long. Mm. Um, to get featured in that is great. Uh, nice. So that's the Gaunt Summoner for the Zinch. Yeah. So that's for a little Zinch warband that I want to use for Age of Sigma Skirmish when I get round to it. Nice. You have been considering Age of Sigmar as last yeah, time? Yeah, I need to work out what a good size of an army is to get started. So, mm -hmm. And also, tactically, I know the game is different to classic Warhammer, so I need to get a feel for what it is. Yeah, the, the actual timings of the game have changed up a lot from what I've seen myself, so it's it does have a nice new flavour to it. Yeah. Um, and then something of interest, is something I painted uh, ooh, about five years ago, ooh, is this. Older? So this is a model that Rackham put out right towards the tail end. Ah. So it's a multi-part plastic model. So it came with lots of uh, variant heads, variant arm pieces. Mm. And so this is the Aberrant Prime. So the reason I bought that is because it's used. you can use it in the hybrid uh, dungeon crawler game they brought out. Ah, I see. One thing I always love from the the guys is the the weapon designs they do. Those yeah, nice sweeping blades. And this this thing is insane. If you find a copy of this anywhere to buy, you yeah. go, oh, it's a plastic model. I have to clip it from the sprues. No, it's hard plastic, pre-cut from the sprues, and it comes in a tray pre-formed. Yeah, covered in red felt uh, in a red f uh, yeah. felt finish. We, it's just like we had one of those one time. What What are you doing? But the level of quality you feel when you open it and go, oh my god, I, it's almost a shame to do this. Pure insanity. Um, right, let's go with these guys. So okay. I thought you just want to see up close. These are, because I'm playing a Necromunda campaign. I'm actually yeah. running it. I'm the arbitrator. <laughs> I'm getting beaten up in it as well. Okay. So well, this is Gene Silicolt models. Yeah. It's just a few to give a, a flavour. Yeah. I have been curious as to see how these actually play on the tabletop, seeing that, that sort of meld of human and gene stealer together. Yeah, so unlike a normal gang, they don't get Jews. Um, they get normal gangers, they get their gang acolyte, um, gang adept leader, mm -hmm. uh, which you can either use him or you can use uh, uh, the typical guy that comes in the in the um, Gene Slocott box, yeah. or you can use the, the Magus model, so you can have psychic powers. Yeah. But rather than just getting um, uh, Jews, you get instead acolytes. So you know the multi-handed oh, okay. guys, yeah. you can get them, they're your champions. And they can obviously be given multiple arms, which yeah. is a massive bonus in fighting because they're rocking around with like you know two weapons or or a, a two-handed weapon and a hand flamer, uh -huh. which is always good. Because why not uh, toast your food before you eat it? 
Yeah. Uh, then also trying out some skin tones and stuff uh, for the Escher. Escher are the gang that really captured my imagination when I first saw this. They're really cool. Um, um, they're all gas weapons, poison weapons. Yeah. And they've got that really nice sort of 80s punk look with the, the yeah. massive hair. I think it's definitely, they've retained some of the old theme of the original models. Same mm. with the Goliath, but it, it's been, it's a little less hair metal with the guys. Yeah. You see, there's a, a crispness to the, the newer miniatures that I really like compared yeah. to the, the old Hammer style stuff. Yeah. And keeping that, that same sort of 80s style, but using modern sculpting techniques. And it's a really great game. It's a great, in my opinion, it's a great uh, modern interpretation of Necromunda with the uh, alternating activation. Yeah. I actually really need to sit down and paint up my, my Asher from uh, my own set. But of it's, course. It's getting time. You know, watch this space. Vans are on my list to, to collect. They have always been a firm favourite. And those new models... Yeah. Oh, awesome. I, I I am curious about the, the Orlock to see how they play now that they're out. Well they're all they're all about automatic gunfire. Yeah. So the the odds of them pinning you as they're firing auto guns galore yeah. and heavy stubbers. <clears throat> yeah, all awesome. good stuff. Right, next. Who's this? So that was um I've done up as a that's the old um Ironhand Strachan model. Ah but I thought, hey, he makes a good uh yeah. a, a good uh, merc. Yeah, that's good. So we're going to use him for Necromunda. Yeah, and you can instantly tell that he's an older miniature because of that flat pose. Yeah, exactly. The flat cast. You know, but really nice. And you've done a nice job painting them up. It's nice to see older miniatures can be painted up yes. with today's techniques and be made to look great. Right. Now, let's get through to something that was more that's relevant to what you had recently on the show, which is those um, Fallen Frontier busts. Yes. So some of these are actually the, the war game models of those busts. Ah, okay. So let's start with... Um, yeah, let's we'll start with these guys. So this is the these are the Rift. Those are basic Rift Troopers. Okay. So... Nice sci-fi look. Big flat panels that they're if you really big, wanted to. And they're a big thirty-five millimeter size, yeah. so they're a fair yeah. chunk. I love your skin tones, Chris. They look really. Thank great. you. They they're getting that kind of grey kind of skin tone mm. with a bit of blue in there to pop. Yeah. Um, then we have this is a berserker. Mm. I recently picked mm. up. So again, they the whole set you get a box of a box of five. They're really dynamic poses. Yeah, there's a real sense of motion with this guy that he's just charging up the battlefield and just on the fly he's lifting the gun to go, nope, fire. And I have to apologise, I can't remember this guy's name off by heart, but he's one of the characters, so uh, I think one of the bus is not based on him, it's mm -hmm. based on another character, but again... Yeah. Um, and the game system, again, has a very interesting uh, turn sequence that means tactically how and when you take your turns influences how your opponent is going to react mm. um, and their options. So it'll be nice to see for, um, Scale 75 to come back with yeah. more stuff for the game to update the rules as well yeah. a little bit because it was the first game they've put out. So understandably, it needs a little polish in places, but yeah. uh, it's good fun, yeah. I have to say. Yeah, it is nice to see a command pose where it's not the commander standing and pointing. Yeah, you know, you can tell this guy is the commander. He's got a commanding pose without it just being I must point to show that I am the commander. Uh, so that's um one of the that's a Sayx uh, okay. commander. So that's now, a human. This was definitely one of the busts. Yeah, the bust I saw, I loved it, and the actual miniature itself looks absolutely fantastic. So really, really nice job. Yeah, and the paint work, you've captured the character really nicely. Thanks. She's in the game. Obviously, she's a tactics person. She's not very yeah. powerful. But that's one of the basic troopers for that faction. Okay. They've got a really cool kind of um, starship troopers kind of look with the yeah. armor's very functional, mm. cool um, submachine guns, uh, and tactically they can do a lot of movement and firing. So they're a very dynamic mm. army. Yeah. This that's is up. cool. Oh, sorry. That's another character for the um, riff. Sorry. Uh, Again, another berserker. Again, nice dynamic pose, more of a I will have you pose. Yeah. Now, why did they all have this, like, one gauntlet? Uh, I have no idea. I can't, I, I can't remember if it's been revealed in the, uh, in the fluff for that. Uh, um, I see. Now, this is one of the battle suits Ooh. for the Sax. I like me some So it's a Vulcan battle suit. I think it's a Vulcan battle suit, yeah. So you, um, I've got, like, three of these things. And, again, they've got Gatling guns and can just yeah. pin units down. The way they've sculpted the ammo feeds in is really nice because it, it looks as if it would be quite well out of the way if this thing was actually in operation. Yeah. You know, there are times whenever I see like uh, chain ammo feeds that just 
they don't look believable sometimes. And then this is one of the Ares, one of the superhuman races. Um, so they're like they're humanoid, uh -huh. but they're not humans. They were made by a creator race uh, ah. that's been missing. Uh, so this is I can't remember the name of the the armor set for them. It's a Hyperion armor. So his background is he tore the door off a ship to use as a shield. <laughs> um, and again, they're really chunky. So yeah. yeah, there's a nice cleanliness to the armor design of this. It's Across all of this, the, the armour feels clean panels, clean lines in the design work. So it gives you space to do some interesting brush work to mm. put battle damage on, yeah. and it doesn't get lost in all the fine detail that can yeah. happen on yeah, some or stuff. Or if someone who loves to do like freehand work, I mean, like I, there are some freehand painters out there who just blow my mind. Yeah. Right, so that's, that's, that's my hobby. That's my painting hobby. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful work, very nicely done. Let's talk about events that you've been to with Darker Days Radio and ones you're going to do this year. Yeah. That has me curious. So when I was last here, uh, we were talking about World of Darkness Berlin. Yes. As this big European event that White Wolf was running to kind of uh, show off mm. Vampire 5th Edition. Yeah, how did uh, it go? It was a huge event. Lots of very interesting talks and presentations. Mm -hmm. um, there was also the Vampire the Eternal Struggle European Continental Championship there. Nice. So they're, they're bringing back the card game. Yeah. Now that card game is uh, was created by the same guy who created Magic the Gathering. So mm -hmm. it's an evolution of the, the rule system you can see in there. It's a great multiplayer game and there are brand new cards. Awesome fun for those guys. With the actual event, uh, we, we talked about game design, we talked yeah. about the style they're going for with the artwork, because they've got, um, uh, why can't I think of a name? But they brought on some really um, big people that are involved in, like uh, Ken Height, who's who's done mm. Call, Call of Cthulhu gaming, yeah. uh, roleplay games, writing. Or art is this, or writing? Writers, art, game right. design, the this whole world. Everyone expand then. It was a really excellent event. We had the, uh, the premiere of the World of Darkness uh, documentary. Nice. Uh, we had also the Enlightenment in Blood LARP event. So this is a Nordic LARP event. So rules light, not yes. buffer LARP, not um, no ca character sheets were very minimal. Like there were just notes that you could have on yeah. your phone. And it took place in around a portion of Berlin, which is where all the nightclubs are. Mm -hmm. And everyone was in character. Right. Walking around. So, you know, you have the high. So, you guys went out clubbing it as a LARP? Yes, because we had clubs hired out okay. to different locations. That, that could we have been weird if you were someone local to Berlin going out to this club. Well, you, yeah, we had we had rules and we had to be yeah. very careful about if we did things in character outside of the locations yeah. to um, ensure that there was, the public mm. was safe first with what we were doing and knew that it was fake. Yes, of course. So, there's that whole important element of that but it was pervasive it also helped people feel like well if i'm a vampire i can't i've got to be careful so people don't overhear uh, yeah. us talking about stuff yeah. and it wasn't just people playing vampires right. there were werewolves there were changelings there were normal mortals people playing normal humans who knew nothing about what was going on and they did die and mike and myself so mike my co-host uh, yeah. came over from boston and we played technocratic agents so they're kind yeah. of mages but they're or they see magic as being science, like yeah. super science. So our game plan was we go into this event, we had yeah. a mission, and everything spiraled out of control. <laughs> and our mission changed to get as much information and take it back to HQ so we could send in the hit marks, these androids in the setting, yeah. to clear out the vampire scum. Please tell me it ended like a good John Woo movie. Um, we didn't get into a gunfight. I think there was a, a lot of battles a lot of fights and bloodbaths with like the prince of the city being killed and wells punching vampires into red mist yeah uh mike and i crested along from all of this bad stuff happening we'll go somewhere and move on and then learn later the people we were talking to had got killed the moment we left <laughs> so uh yeah we were very lucky but it was really great, and a, a, as a first LARP experience that I've ever done, yeah. and Mike has ever done, the, the Nordic LARP ex experience was excellent. And um, you know, we've got uh, Sam here has mm -hmm. said he's going to the College of Wizardry. Yeah, yeah. So that's he, sort of, by the time this goes out, he may have already gone, or he'll yeah. be about to leave. He so may be on the plane. So that's a Harry Potter-inspired Nordic LARP event. Mm -hmm. So again, it's held at like a castle and so forth. Yeah, it's so, in Poland. So the guys that run that one yeah. also run another White Wolf Vampire the Masquerade event called Convention of Thorns. That's later in the year. Ah, okay. 
And that takes place in a historical setting within Vampire the Masquerade, yeah. where you're at a castle and you're all dressed up for that time period. Yeah. So all these things are going on. And we did recently interview the guys at Jackalope's LARP nice. in... And they're based in Texas, and they're running another Nordic LARP event in the same style. Uh-huh. Where? In Texas. Oh, okay. It's a historical one, so it's set in the 90s, and it's about the Sabbat, who are this bloodthirsty group mm. of vampires. So it's going to be in a club, and there's going to be lots of fake blood being spilt, and right. people being turned into vampires. It's going to be a mass embrace, or something like that. Going to, I don't know, but we're going to hopefully get one of the team there. Yeah. And... We might have a ticket to give away. Ooh. So when I get the details, you guys will know. Okay. Send them over to the podcast. Yeah. They'll listen to the competition, and, you know, yeah. if you're there, you can get to it, because these tickets aren't cheap, because the level of renting huge events, getting all the gear yeah. together, it requires a lot of input. I have to say, the, the idea of going to an event where an entire location is fully rented out, which actually represents what you're LARPing in, I mean, like, yeah. fine, people's costumes and stuff or however far they go can change, but actually having the venue of the location you're LARPing in is the actual venue you're in Yeah, must be a very interesting and different experience. And the vast amount of the players taking part in that event will be humans yeah. who won't know what's going on, yeah. and eventually one of your friends will die and come back as a vampire. Yes. And then, if you want to, there's even tickets where you can go, I won't come back as a vampire. But I'll come back as a new human who dies again and again and oh, again right. and again. So you're just me, you know, you're just, you're just blood, yeah, yeah, blood and more blood. And what will they literally be like chucking special effects blood over people? Or? There'll be special effects blood being used. <laughs> yeah, it's that, that could be crazy. Fun. That could be fun. Um, so that's the event. We've done a podcast about that, interviewing yeah. the team behind that. Yeah, and that, is that the one where the competition is, or is this an upcoming one? There's a no. The competition we're yet to uh, announce what we're doing for the competition. Okay. We need to figure out, make it a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other event we have done uh, was in December was Dragon Meat, and okay. that's in London. So that uh, is a big role play event. Uh, I think it's. Let me think. It is hosted by the guys from Mephidius. Oh, so Mephidius. Mephidius. Sorry. Yeah. They they help run that event. Sorry, I make that same mistake. The yeah. Um, so again, it's mainly role play games going on. A chance to try out new games, try out demos. Um, so I went down. I talked to Matt Dawkins, who's a writer on Vampire Fifth Edition yep. and works for Onyx Path on other games. Dave Brookshaw, again, works for Onyx Path on Mage and mm. other games. Eddie Webb also works for Onyx Path. Mm. Uh, works on games like Pugmire, that's his own creation, and also World of Darkness and Chronicles of Darkness games. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Matt Dawkins' upcoming game. Uh, uh, was it? They came from beneath the seas. So it's a new horror game, mm-hmm. but more kind of that. 70s Doctor Who feel? Oh, that could be interesting. So, yeah, it's a very different feel to say Chronicles of Darkness or World of Darkness, but yeah. it's because horror takes very different forms depending upon the type of films or TV you look yeah. at. And then you, you do get some horror where it's it's not quite so dark and gritty. It's yeah. more of the, the camp sort of 70s a bit, horror. Or a bit pulpy get. or yeah. a bit folk horror like, you know, Wicker Man. Yeah. So I ran at Dragon Meat as well, uh, a Vampire 5th Edition um, demo. And I have to say, that in that update that we got to of the rules is a great update so i'm now looking forward to seeing what else they'll do to polish up and get ready yeah yeah okay moving on events we're going to okay uk games expo done yeah. right yeah. so i'm gonna we, run we will hopefully see the guys there while we're there i'm running a demo there of my of chronicles of darkness using uh-huh. my own story that i've written that's based on my hometown oh <laughs> very folk horror yeah. um i might run some vampire fifth edition so watch this space i'll announce when we plan it yeah yeah uh, I'm, we're also going to HorrorCon UK in Sheffield. So this mm-hmm. is a big horror uh, media TV event. Um, it's not gaming, but horror is our thing, so we're going to look at it. Mm, it's nice to, to jump in and see what's going on. So it's going to have like Dario Gento, who he's a director of like Giallo, which is Italian horror, like yeah. Suspiria and Tenebri. Jeff Coombs, you might mm-hmm. know from Reanimator and DS9. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, David Warner, also appears in quite a fair bit of Star Trek, and The Omen. Uh, Billy Whiff from Lost Boys and yeah. Barbara Crampton also from Reanimator and from yeah. Beyond. Yeah, Reanimator was an interesting show. Yeah, uh, that was a very interesting yeah film based on Lovecraft's yeah. stuff. We actually have the sequel. Do you want to borrow it? Uh, I think Beyond I can Re-Animator? mostly stream it from somewhere. Yeah, maybe. Um, 
Other events coming up. Uh, Manchester International Gothic Association Convention, which is also being run by... Uh, running, I think, in conjunction with the Manchester Gothic Festival. So mm. it's the 200th anniversary this year of Frankenstein. Oh, nice. So this event is a time... Uh, is This convention obviously brings together people that are experts in media, culture, mm. film, TV, that gothic horror kind of encapsulates. Yeah. So the plan is to run a live-streamed horror RPG there. I wonder what I might run. It might be what I run at UK Games Expo. Or I might run something based on Promethean the Created, because in that you play Frankenstein like monsters. Yeah, that could be good. Could so be good. let's keep it themed. Well, why not actually have your players play the, the villagers coming after Frankenstein? Um, to actually figure out what's going on at the castle, things like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe. Like that. But the point, about, the point about Frankenstein is maybe the point really of the novel is that Frankenstein's creation, the monster, is not the monster. It's more about how it makes you reevaluate how we react to people that are different to us. So it's yeah. kind of a, a soul searching kind of topic. Maybe. The other event, Mike um, is going to, well, he, he ran previously, he'll be going along to again. He went to PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. So it was a PAX Penny Arcade Expo, but mainly gaming, tabletop gaming focus. Yes. So he ran there last time. Uh, a Dark Ages Mage game set in Constantinople back mm. during the fall of it. So that's what, uh, Fourth Crusade period. Okay. So um, he also helped out with a 100 player Sabat LARP um, run by the Roll, uh, the Roll Initiative Philly. 100 player role playing game. Yeah, well, uh, the, the, the uh, Jackalopes LARP is going to be 200 players. It's a proper club. How many GMs do you need to run that? Well, kind yeah, of you do have people lurking around to be storytellers to make sure things don't get out of control. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I'm sure Mike will be going to PAX Unplugged again, doing mm -hmm. the same deal. Obviously, there's PAX East. We've got co-hosts that are in Australia. There's PAX Australia. Yeah. Uh, Chig, one of our other co-hosts who's in Texas, who hopefully is going to the Night in Question one, mm -hmm. it will be at Gen Con. I assume he's going to sort out a ticket to go to Gen Con. So yeah, yeah we're everywhere in that sense. And then episodes to look out for that we've recorded. We yes. had our interview with White Wolf Entertainment. Mm -hmm. We talked to Martin and Tobias about the future of World of Darkness, the future of the company. Yep. Uh, we interviewed Megan Fitzgerald recently about changing the lost second edition that recently finished its Kickstarter and did gangbusters on that. It was good stuff. Uh, we interviewed, of course, Adam Poots recently you, you of Kingdom not. Death. Uh, we had a very, very long discussion about design and mm. concepts of the game. Uh, and then also recently we've done some Network Zero episodes, which are primers to Changing the Lost and Werewolf the Forsaken. Ah, I see. For the second editions, anyway. So yeah, I'm doing a primer on upcoming, primer on Promethean the Created second edition, yep. Mage of the Awakening second edition, any fifth, fifth ed news on Vampire when I tease it out of the team there, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll get the team on from White Wolf and Onyx Path again, yeah. and other horror RPGs, because... Yeah, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is coming back with a new edition mm -hmm. of um, of that game, and it's quite a horrific setting. Yeah. So, and I've run some recently, and again, very folk horror, like villagers going, "Who are you?" Uh, it's like I'm a flagellant, and I'm here to get rid of the demons, yeah. and ends up just hurting the wrong people anyway. <laughs> um, but that's it. Yeah, we've got, we've done a lot. We're going to do some more stuff. Obviously, I'm going to paint some more stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where we're at. So tune in to Darker Days if you're into horror RPGs yeah. and World of Darkness. Um, and yeah, come back to Beast of War for more, more yeah, painted we, crack. <laughs> yeah, well, th this is also the, the end recording of uh, Chris's most recent visit. So we do have more Kingdom Death Monster uh, in the can. It's been good. It's been it's, painful, it's been but good. it's been really good. Yeah, there, so. were, there were one or two moments where it just felt like, you know, the game just decided to wind back. And straight up between the legs. I think we did that to the white line again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, everybody, tell you what, get your comments in below. Are you looking forward to what uh, Chris at Darker Days Radio and the guys over there are going to be getting up to? Uh, if there are any events you know of that they maybe want to take a look at, drop them in the comments below. And, uh, well, we'll move on. See you again soon. Join us for a Kingdom Death Monster all weekend on twitch.tv forward slash beasts of war. I've never really looked deeply into the horror genre for RPGs before, but it sounds like a really interesting thing to dive into. Oh yeah, it, it can be great, and I've uh, watched Let's Plays mm. of 
uh, RPG sessions where people have really managed to tap into that horror. I've never yet managed to get in a game like that myself mm. because usually games I've sat in with my friends start out horror and devolve into comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he hearing about I'm talking about taking over an entire club for a role playing session. And then having like buckets of fake oh, blood the being chucked about. Yeah, the lap yeah. he was at, yeah. Dude, I can. Uh, do, do any of you remember when Blade came out? Yeah. Right? The, dude, the first the, Blade? Yeah, the yeah. nightclub scene oh, at, yeah. at the start. You know, yeah, and the I, sprinklers. I, and it was just, you know, I, I, it was. I watched that and I thought to myself, we never, we don't have anything like that where I live. <laughs> uh, that has got to be the coolest thing ever. If yeah. you could, if you could do a LARP. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. You know, where you're in... Uh, I wouldn't I, want to pay the cleaning bill. I wouldn't. Yeah, well, we, we wouldn't. You know. <laughs> me and you would just be going. But it, the thing about it is, right... Um, would you like, seriously go LARPing with me? The word is seriously, right? <laughs> and that's what I want to get to on this one, right? Uh, I'm a bit like you. Mm. I, I, I'm, I, 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 when I get nervous, I get jokey. Yeah. When I'm not nervous, I get jokey. When I'm happy, I get jokey. I just kind of like yeah. joking around. Yeah. So if I was in, a, in something, I would probably joke around. But in that, I don't think I would joke around. I think I could go into character and actually stay in character for uh, because the intensity of yeah. that particular scene, if it was able to recreate that. So oh. the answer is yes, I seriously would do that one. Me and With you, me? yeah, we'd go in into that there. I'd be I'd be done up in my best nines, like yeah. some kind of like. I don't know, like dealer dude, vampire dealer dude. I, I know exactly what like, he would look like. Oh, all the guys from what we do in the shadows. I haven't watched it. So. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Damn it, no, no, that was yeah. a good joke. I, I think I'd be amazing. I think Hello. it'd be amazing. I'd love to do it. I, I, so do, I do have to raise my hand. Next year, I have made the decision. I'm joining yeah. Sam in Poland for the College of Wizardry LARP. After my first LARP, I'm hooked. I have loved it. Yeah, so I get to create to both your wands. Well, I've, I've actually decided on my character as well. Oh, have you, Justin? Yes. You um, are not touching oh, me. is this your wand? This is my wand. Can I see it? May there I are many like it, but this one is yours. It's like a bony finger, Sam. It's like a bony finger. So, okay, let, we're going to have yeah. to show people this wand. Yeah. So this... This is on. made by my friend I, the, Stephen. You need a wider thing for, for the wand, right? So this is Sam's wand. Well, Fletch. Fletch. Fletch, yeah. is, Fletch is your character. Yeah. So this is Fletch's wand. Can I see your little sheath? Uh, yep. Sure. I, do you mind if I slip it in? Go ahead. Okay, that's uh, perfect. Uh, gent gently, gently. Okay, so gently. Fletch's wand. There you go. Slips. Ooh, it's got a wee knobbly bit there that just... You have to get the turn right. Yeah, okay. Because the, uh, the actual... Uh, it's, it's you, just, you, you get the turn right and it just slips in, Sam. I go. feel violated. There, <laughs> there we go. Does it... You know, it doesn't poke out the end because there's there's a wee bit covering yeah. the end of yeah. it there. That's actually really nice. Your it mate is. made that. Yeah, a friend of mine made that. Yeah, yeah, no, so no, you'd no. let him make you a one, but you wouldn't let me make you a one. No, there's because a, there's a level of I don't trust, trust you. to wand making. Just Not. sniffing it. Has anybody else sniffed your wand, or am I the no, first? No, you are the first. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just curious. Uh, he was just curious, yeah. That's actually really nice. Mine would be better. Yeah. <laughs> Mine would be better. What did he make it out of? I'm not Please sure. Please don't just wood. say wood. Uh, yeah, I knew you were going to say wood. It looks like a bit of type of ash. Yeah, probably very light. It's a nice piece of ash, that man. So. Funnily enough, it is, you say that his character at the lab was called Ash. So was it? Yeah, Ash Jones. So, uh, so, right, uh, so you've picked your character, Justin. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna draw from Irish legend. Of course, you are. Why not? Right, so you're going as Finn McCool's bollock. Uh, no, no. No, okay, no. right. No, he's going as the product of Finn McCool's bollock. I <laughs> <laughs> hell of a size of a baby. Well, no, you said you're going as Oisin. Yeah, I'm going That's as That's Finn McCool's son. Yeah. Oh, so you... I, yeah. How did I guess? <laughs> I knew it had something to do with Finn McCool's bollock. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going as who? Rushing. Uh, Oisin. 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 <laughs> Right, and what do you know about Oisin? Uh, he was basically one of Other the... Other than the fact he did a lot of Oisin around. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, actually, he was one of the Fianna who fell in love with one of the fairy folk and went to Tir mm -hmm. He thought he had spent three days there. No, wait, 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 slow yeah. down. Right, fairy folk as in the leprechauns and stuff yes. like yeah. Tir which is? The land of the fairy folk, yes. The kingdom of the fairy folk. Yeah, it's, it's a mountain, isn't it? It's uh, Tir Nog. It's, it, Tir Nog it's... would be one of the fairy uh, wraths in yeah. itself. Yeah. Are you actually? I think. I think. I don't know if it's Tyrion and Og. I, it's been a while since I read the Mythic I, I, Cycle. I read it, but recently. It, yeah, I believe that was um, the Isles of the Blessed he went to, rather oh, okay. than Tyrion and Og itself. Okay. But like I said, it's been a long time yeah, since I read the Mythic Cycle. He, he went to the land of the little people. Okay? Yeah. 
He thought he had spent three days there. Right. He hadn't. It was 300 years. Oh. But he didn't age. Okay. And basically, he went there because he had fallen in love with a female fairy. Uh-huh. And when he wanted to leave, she so- warned him that should he touch mortal soil again, all the years that he had spent in Tir Nanog will we'll catch come, up with we'll him again. on him again. Yeah. Yes. So he went back out into the world on horseback, so he's not touching the ground. Yeah. Never saw that he is. Uh-huh. And he starts riding about, looking for the Fianna. Unfortunately, and what's the Fianna? Uh, it's they were the Irish they warriors. were the Irish, uh, basically the warrior elite, yeah. led by Finn McCool, not giant Finn McCool. Okay, the the original. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And and why was he looking for them? Well, they're his people. Okay, so right. he's he's out looking for his people, and you know they're all gone. Uh-huh. And as he's riding around, he actually finds a group of men on a mountainside trying to shift a boulder out of the path. Yes. Now they're having. A wild time of it, they can't get the thing shifted, and him being one of the Fianna, they essentially had super strength, as the legend goes. Yeah. So he turns to them and says, don't worry, I can shift it, uh-huh. but I can't get down from my horse. Yes. So he reaches down from the horse to actually try and shift the boulder, and fair enough, it starts to move. But as he reaches down, the buckle on the horse breaks, and he falls off the horse, uh-huh. and he ages. 300 years. Yes. And dies. I don't Not immediately, no. He converts to, he survives and converts to Christianity. Really? Hmm. Um, and you're going as this guy? I think I could do a play on that character to make something interesting for the College of Wizardry. Have you got a horse? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I don't need one. <laughs> so, right, so don't get this. So, so he's, he's an incredibly strong guy, and he's riding around on a horse. Well, he was only riding around on a horse. But you're a wiry little guy, <laughs> and you don't have a horse. <laughs> it's, like... no, it, it's, it's, just, it's an interesting piece of Irish... Legend that I thought I could turn into a, a reasonable character for the LARP. Absolutely, I can't. What can I make your wand? You can make a wand. <laughs> no, all right, I'll make your wand. You, you can. Right. I tell you what, you can make my backup wand. All right, I will. Uh, no, I'll make. Uh, I'll get your backup wand. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a great story for you. All right. Uh-oh. So on the show, uh, I've talked about the fairy folk. Mm, okay, yeah. I've also talked about the fairy tree that was where I used to oh, live yes, yes. in Markerfeld. I think we talked about all this on the backstage. It we? was cut down. Oh, who died? It was cut down, and the contractor died. <laughs> I a, knew it. A contractor from England was brought in uh-huh. and cut it down. Apparently, it's a, a few years back. I, I hadn't noticed that it was missing. It was my sister was telling me mm. that um uh, that they uh, got a contractor in from England. Nobody would touch it, and a contractor yeah. came mm. in from England specifically to clear it and uh, to, to to do up that area. Uh-huh. And he died two months later. Now it would have been more interesting had he died like the previous guy that went to cut it down, who died. Before he actually, the actual yeah. edits, yeah. he dropped dead on the spot. But um, uh, apparently, he died two, uh, two, two months later. And my mum was telling me an interesting story because when we get starting to talk yeah, about the little course. folk, then it oh, all I... goes around. So um, everyone's got this. Story. My great, how do I say, my great great uncle. So my my grandmother's brother, my grandmother and her brother were twins. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and she had another brother. And the two brothers um, uh, were, were um, complete believers in the little folk, mm. right? Um, in fact, uh, my other, uh, my grandmother's twin mm-hmm. um, even named his cottage after the little folk and, and apparently just talked to the little folk all the time and did all this stuff. But his other brother tells the story of how he was up as he's thatching a house mm. near a town called Naclochram. Mm-hmm. And there was a brook. No, the Americans don't try and pronounce that. Naclochram. And there was a brook near the house with wild rhubarb. Mm-hmm. And he swears, or well, swore blind, he's dead now, he swore blind that he watched uh, a little folk um, uh, walk out um, of the, the, the wild rhubarb mm-hmm. and go and fill a tiny bucket full of water mm-hmm. and then walk back into the wild rhubarb. That's adorable. And then my mum tells me a great story. This didn't happen to any family of mine, mm-hmm. of the little folk, of a guy who was standing in, a, in an, an orchard, a kind of like a forest or a meadow or something mm-hmm. like yeah. that there. And he was just looking around him. He felt a bit of shenanigans around his feet. <laughs> and he never looked. Um, he just was continuing looking around. I don't know if he was eating a sandwich or eating or something or, or whatever. But then he felt it again. He looked down and there was this tiny little woman who was clipping around his feet. <laughs> right? And it, she was cutting, basically, with a, with a, with a set of clippers yeah. right around his feet. Now, I thought mum meant she was clipping yeah. the grass. But no. I'll tell you what she was clipping in a minute. And then he looked up, and, uh, and ahead of him was uh, another little fairy folk man uh-huh. who was rolling up his shadow. Ah. <laughs> and the wee woman was clipping his shadow from around his feet. Ah. And the, the other dude was, uh, the other little guy <laughs> was rolling up the shadow. 
And he, he freaked. And he well, turned, as you would. And he turned around and he says, What are you doing? And the wee man looked up and says, Can you see us? And he goes, Of course I can see you. And the pair of them just ran away and left the shadow where it was. <laughs> now, you say these were little people. Mm -hmm. They weren't fairies at all. It was just my family. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, how freaky would that be? Because it freaked my mum out. And then, uh, and then I got to thinking about it and I thought, That is really freaky. What the hell would they be doing that they'd be trying to clip your shadow? Oh, we've got to make our curtains out of something. Yeah, but w what would happen if they took your shadow? Is that the well, same in, as like, in Peter your soul? Pa in the old Peter Pan one, it would be you turned upside down, I think it was. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Although, from the old Irish legends, the one that always freaked me out the most was the Banshee. Yeah? You know, you hear the wheel of the Banshee, and then... My grandfather, my grandfathers and stuff used to talk relentlessly about the Banshee and how oh, they yeah. heard the Banshee before such and such passed away. And, mm. oh, did you hear the Banshee? She was out last night. It used to scare the crap yeah. out of me. Absolutely scared the crap out of me. Grand right. used to talk about it too. Let's talk about some Kickstarter. Yeah. Ben. All right. Happy stuff. Ben. Ben. We'll, we'll talk about the lab and stuff Stop me backstage. freaking out now. Stop me freaking out. Right. What, do, what have we got on Kickstarter? Obviously, I know exactly what the first Kickstarter is going to be because it's the biggest Kickstarter on at the moment. Yeah, so uh, another big favourite of Chris Handley is obviously Confrontation. Um, he's talked about that a little bit before on the show and things. But um, yes, this is the big Confrontation classic Kickstarter from Sans Detour. Um, so this is the massive collection that you can uh, get your hands on right now. It's contained within one large core box that will contain 178 plus miniatures mm -hmm. for all 16 factions that were originally out there for the game in mm -hmm. 3.5 of Confrontation. And they've also put together what's called the battle sets. Now, the battle sets allow you to actually play the game itself. Um, as I said before, the rules for this are based on the 3.5 version of Confrontation as well as Dogs of War, which was one of the supplements for it as well. I'm sure that someone will correct me if I'm slightly wrong on that, but mm -hmm. that's what I'm seeing on the Kickstarter anyway. It'll contain some... Um, terrain elements as well as all the accessories you need to play the game and of course you can download the rules and give them a try as well as this when you go in for this massive pledge um, you'll also be able to add in every single stretch goal that they unlock for this kickstarter campaign i think it's coming in around the 300 ish sort of um uh, like euros area mm -hmm. and when you get that you get pretty much everything that gets thrown into the mix as well and there's been some talk about the models themselves they're going to be in some kind of uh, like a hybrid of like a resin plastic um so if you're interested in that kind of thing just make a keep an eye out for what they tell us in the future about the materials for this which would be pretty cool but yeah they're taking all the classic models that you knew and loved from those ranges and bringing them back to the tabletop for you to play with again um, one of the big things that Sans de are doing is that actually later on this year they're going to be doing what's called Confrontation Resurrection, which will be their new edition of the game. Yeah. Um, and all the models that you see here that are part of this Kickstarter campaign are going to be fully compatible with what they do in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to be pick up, picking up all these models and then they're going to be useless. Uh, they're going to be able to be used in the game going forward as they uh, take this uh, on further into the future. Oh, so, that's yeah. just amazing. What well, uh, you know confrontation mm. are you it's it's nearly enough for you it, yeah. it's a, such a huge box of incredible miniatures yeah. I'm, I'm sure our recent winner we actually give this pledge away with all the spirit schools mm -hmm. that guy's got to be sitting there going yes 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 yes, yes. Oh, you lucky lucky guy yeah it, um, an incredible incredible yeah. set I, I do want to say um while we've heard a lot about stuff from Sansa Tour and we've talked about this in the past on previous weekends with the designers and everything that's behind this there is still a very long period left on this Kickstarter and um, mm -hmm. so if you're on the fence about it there is plenty of time for you to see how they deal with updates and the community feedback and all that kind of thing and I know they're trying to do live streams and all sorts of things as well yeah. so keep an eye out for what they're doing on the community side of things you don't have to jump in on it immediately and then if you feel happy you know within the last 10 days or so get stuck in and, and check yeah, it out then we're, as well we're, but, we're um, still looking at about 26 days to go on that yes, but it's yeah, definitely yeah. one worth keeping an eye on yeah. that Yes. Uh, and I like the fact that it, you know it, it's already coming bundled with the rules, the three point five mm -hmm. rules. Yeah, and the it fact looks that, like they've got a download on there. So yeah, and I and I think yeah. it's not just a case of the the new game will be compatible with the model. I think mm. the new game is based around the entire model range. Yeah, and, you know yeah. That, that's yeah. there. So it's it's an investment by them. It's an investment by you, but. Mm. It's a heck of a game system to be investing in. You know, it's a confrontation was. I, I will also say they have really laid really out fun. their plan going forward. Um, yeah. So they are sort of working this out to be within sort of like an eighteen month period. Yeah. So they have planned everything out. They did obviously say that everything is subject to change because mm. of the whims of Kickstarter and all that yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but just bear that in mind that a lot of stuff has already been planned out ahead of time. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Take that all into account when it comes to backing these kind of Kickstarters. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Yeah, 26 days uh, left. 
definitely worth uh, hovering mm. over on that one, to putting down your your minimum pledge just to be kept in in the loop on that mm. one. It's it's one I'm watching like a hawk. I've got to say, uh, Ben, who's next then? Uh, so the next one is from the guys at Chaosium. Now these are the guys that do um, the Call of Cthulhu uh, role playing games and all that kind of thing. Oh, yes. and they're also now doing a board game uh, oh. alongside one of a, a very very famous uh, board game designer called Rainer Knizia, and this is called Miskatonic University: The Restricted Collection. Mm -hmm. And in this, you're going to be playing as a bunch of students underneath Dr. Henry Ar Armitage, the uh, chief librarian, and he wants you to go into the restricted collection of the Miskatonic University and find fragments of law and sigils and grimoires to bring together so that he can try and work out how to understand and indeed defeat the um, dark terrors that lie beyond. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, this is a little bit of a, like a, a push your luck game, but with cards instead of dice in this. And so what you'll do on each turn is you'll head off into the library and you'll reveal cards and you'll decide whether or not you're going to try and take them. You're going to be trying to put together these different grimoires and sigils on the tabletop, but if you get the, a duplicate of one you've already got, there's like a magical arcane backlash and you get sort of booted back out of the, the library and things. So you're all trying to do this and trying to create um, the Grimoires and Sigils and then be the first one that gets all of them done uh, by the end of the five rounds as well. So very cool little interesting game this one. Uh, from what the, from the looks of it, the artwork is looking amazing. Yeah. The mechanics seem quite simple. The push your look aspect to this is the thing that really gets me because I really like those kind of games where you've got to try and like egg it, egg it on a little bit further and try and go deeper into the library. There are obviously some ways for you to mitigate luck. Um, so there are different defenses that you can bring up and wards. But then you can also call on some of the more hapless, I guess you'd say, people in the university and have them take uh, take the brunt of the hits for you instead of you doing it, which seems very uh, Cthulhu yeah. in my mind. So yeah, if you're interested in this kind of game, uh, it's out there on Kickstarter right now. Got about oh, 17 days left as well. I, 17 days yeah. ago, I love the board layout. I love anything that where they oh. use funky or innovative little kind of... yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, it's, yeah, it's mixing love it up this. nicely, and yeah. of course, I love anything Cthulhu esque yeah. and all that. I, it's Cthulhu esque. It's based in, in in digging through the restricted collection, so it that, that's good for my book love as well. Yeah, that that that's that's yeah. another. One I, I really want to get on this. Really, I, nice. I do get the feeling that if we play this, Warren will literally just get me on a stick and send me out in front of him <laughs> down the library. Is it safe? Is it safe? Me and you are right. library, Justin. Nobody <laughs> well, would believe it. <laughs> I would also say yeah, there are also some uh, pledge levels on this which will allow you to do some quirky things as well. So beyond just backing the game, you can get your hands on uh, a very a very cool Miskatonic University diploma. So yeah. if you ever wanted to sh you know, pretend that you're like Dr. whatever his name is from uh, Simpsons, you could have one of those on the wall. Uh, Dr. Nick, that's it. Dr. Hi, Nick, everybody! Yeah. Yeah, and then obviously you can also um, get in there and do some stuff with characters as well, so you can get your names on characters and all that kind of thing as well, which is really Brilliant. cool. Brilliant. So, yeah. I will say the, the jump off point on this one is actually really, really good. It's only 25 bucks to jump in. Yeah. So it's very, very light. I may to well have to see about yeah, this one. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'm tempted. Yeah. I will say I'm tempted. Look, Ben, thank you so much for that. Right, that's our Kickstarters, right, competitions wise. Mm. In the last episode of The Weekender, we were giving away the 11th Doctor and the Companion yes. set. Yes, very um, nice we, uh, In order to enter that competition, we just asked you to name your favorite doctor and our, on the internet. our winner was ben who was our winner uh so our winner was i i am punk yai punk yai punk there you yai go boom. punk now and yai, he said yeah what did he say he said i'm with warren on doctors uh, tom <laughs> baker was who i grew up with and eccleston allowed the doctor to truly be resurrected so there we go you didn't win just because of that, you know. Mm. That was that was the icing on the cake. I, yeah. I would just yeah. like to say I'm very disappointed in you all for your lack of support for the second Doctor and Patrick can, Troughton. Can I? Can the I? The greatest just, Doctor. Can I just sorry, say? Lieutenant. Very disappointed. Can I just say it's not often in a weekender where somebody wins and I win at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Right, remember in this episode we're giving away some German winter plastic infantry. Mm -hmm. um, so to enter that competition and be able a chance of winning yourself some German winter plastic infantry, getting it out, mm -hmm. um, all you have to do is tell us in the comments of what is your favourite World War II movie Ooh. and why. Everybody has one of those. Oh, so what I is your favourite World War Star II Wars. movie and why? Do you know what we have a go? Aye, aye. Will we sure. go? Right. Sam? Oh, I'm still thinking. Ben? Come back to me. Uh, for me, it's either... Oh, no, it's Bridge Too Far. Definitely a Bridge Too Far. I like that one. And why? 
Uh, I just love all the characters in it. They've done, they've got that slight edge of comedy to everything they do in it, but then it's also a very serious war movie at the same time. But it has like really cool characters and amazing actors in it from all over the place. So yeah, very cool. Uh, I have to go modern. It has to be Fury, just because they did such a great job of actually showing how the vehicles look from the inside. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a treadhead alongside John, not as big as a treadhead, but I love seeing the inside of the tank, seeing how cramped. <laughs> how yeah. nasty it was inside and actually seeing how dirty the tanks got anytime yeah. you see a tank these days oh they're all bright clean fully painted no those things got wrecked during the war Sam? okay for me probably the eagle has landed Ooh. which mm-hmm. was uh i think that's the one with uh, michael kane being one of the germans mm. but right. keeping his accent <laughs> Nice. It's been nice. a long time since I saw. I, I've been thinking I, I need to dig that one three out. Three interesting choices. Yeah. What about you? Downfall. Good show. I haven't seen that. Good show. Downfall. Without a doubt, it has to be downfall. And the reason being Ooh, is I, I really, I really enjoyed um, the the look at um, the the German high command of Hitler and Himmler and mm. stuff like that with the cartoony aspects stripped away. Yeah, well, yeah. The fact that they actually um, did the movie in full German was really nice. Yeah, well, they I, were German. I, so it I, was I, a, I may have changed so... my vote, by the way. Oh, I may what? have changed to Where Eagles Dare, because I just remembered that film. And oh, it has yeah. Where <laughs> Eagles <laughs> Dare was <laughs> yeah, it, It's yeah. a toss-up for me between Fury and Valkyrie, because yeah. I used to love Valkyrie as well. No, the, the downfall for me, because the, the, the movie was very understated. You know, it didn't. It wasn't an action movie. It wasn't anything, uh, anything like that. I found it absolutely oh. fascinating and the fact that there was that it resonated with a with a sense of um what's the word i'm looking for a sense of reality a yeah. sense of a sense of the real world about it you know it wasn't it wasn't cartoony it wasn't you yeah. know the, anything that hitler's in it, it's always over the top it was yeah. it was it was really interesting to get yeah. what looked like a gritty almost real world perspective what those last days in the bunker so i'm guessing like. you weren't a fan of inglorious with brad pitt not really no no, no. no. it's all right but... i have to change my vote again because i just remembered the damn busters, uh, <laughs> the damn busters. Yeah. there's so many of them yeah, yeah. Well, look well, we post in the comments below you know it's um we've got a great prize for this you, office so. is just a World War Two movie marathon day. I nah, get awesome. bored after the first one. <laughs> Where's the magic? Put, put the movies into actual chronological order. Yes. And watch through them. I'd be even more bored. Studios and stuff. Yeah. So you're watching Start the War Through Finish of the War. That could be very interesting. Uh huh. You are such an oddball. <laughs> it's lovely. What, stop right. with the negative wave, man. Sp- yeah, oh, oddball. I knew it, man. <laughs> okay, guys, look, thank you so much. Join us tomorrow for the backstage version of this show. Remember, Beast of War wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our backstagers. There would be nothing. There would be no front stage content. There would be no power to run the screen. It has <laughs> the amazing Ben on yeah. it. Ben would disappear um, forever. Uh, we, would, we would be gone. Mm-hmm. Demised. Poof. Shuffled off off this mortal coil. You feeding into backstage is what keeps the whole thing alive. There is no other method for channels and um, uh, projects like ourselves to be able to secure ourselves, to be able to create content Mm. uh, week in, week out for you guys. So we really, really value um, it really helps us out so much whenever you join backstage mm. and you kick in that three quid a month mm. um, uh, just to keep the whole thing uh, uh, trucking forward. Yeah. So um, tomorrow we've got a great show for you. I'm showing off some more about Beast of War 2.0, mm. the next version of the platform, which will be launching soon. Um, so if you want to come across and see that, I've in the last two previous episodes of XS, XLBS, I've been showing off some um, some of the features of the platform, like the project system you'll be able to use and all sorts of cool stuff. So if you're interested in that, join into Backstage, become part and parcel of the core community that is the heartbeat of the entire thing, mm-hmm. and um, buy merch. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to say is, as yes. a Backstager, you do actually get some great bonuses. So we do tons of Backstage content, you get access to the Backstage forums, you get first bite at the boot camps, and uh, yeah, just in general, you get more stuff and you help us keep things running. Yes. Thank you very much, guys. Right, thank you to you. I will see you all bright and early in the morning again, and I'll hopefully see as many of you guys bright and early tomorrow morning again. Pleasure being with you. Have a great week of gaming. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming Let's Plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe, and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.